the Role Play Podcast with Matt and Beard, where we discuss video games, tabletops, pen and paper RPGs, and also other sources of entertainment media. We discuss their design, philosophies, or we just comment on about anything, really, with music provided to us by the very talented Brayton. Please, welcome your hosts, Beard and Matt, because it starts in three, two, one. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Roleplay Podcast. Back again is Beard, my co-host, Matt. All right, yes, and we got tons of cool stuff to talk about this week. But first, let's go with just a few usual announcements. Of course, the podcast is every Saturday, 7 p.m. EST. And if you want to talk to us or react during the show and us react to your reactions, then you can just, you know, um, talk to us on Twitter, uh, me at Matt Playing Vidya. The last word is spelled V-I-D-Y-A. Or, of course, L0, that is the number zero, beard. So L O uh, L zero beard. Yeah, so that's that's how you, you know, you can reach us. And, you know, we're going to talk about your comments. And, of course, we also have uh, this Steam group that we have called the Roleplay Podcast on Steam. And we also are our curators. And, you know, we give you advice on games that we liked if you want ideas. All right. True. So we're going to talk this week about many things that happened that are related to Gamergate. Uh, victories, uh, other things that are pushbacks, you know, shit that just sucked, that ha- happened to happen. Of course, news like, you know, uh, we're going to comment on uh, Jim Sterling leaving The Escapist, and other things that are super, super important. All right, so first, uh, let's just go with the comments. Um, last week, we commented that, uh, we talked about the Binding of Isaac Rebirth, um, and said that it was great, we enjoyed it, and this the user Erdrick X commented, I was actually playing The Binding of Isaac Rebirth while listening to this podcast. Good stuff. <laughs> awesome. And I would like to say to Erdrick that you're listening right. You should play video games while you listen to us, because it's always more, more fun. All right. Yeah, unless you're commenting on something. Yeah, yeah you, you can pause for, you know, from you time to time to be like, hey, Matt, you're a douchebag. Uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, and oh, there's already people who favor uh, retweeted my tweets. That's good. All right. So first of all, um, let's go lo- take a look at how Gamergate is kind of doing when it comes to Topsy. So I'm gonna just bring bring that up on the screen. Eventually, right here. All right. So now we can see. You know, whoops. I'm just gonna move my cursor here. So we could see that you know Gamergate was kind of going back down a bit, but now it's going back up because more stuff happened um so yeah that's good so again it's been how much how long has it been gamer yeah, it's just not it's just never time. stopping yeah. it, it it'll never stop um and of course some people are gonna be like i don't know like uh, we, we must be some very dedicated misogynists am i right <laughs> <laughs> but 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 at the same time we suck because every time we try to harass these women there's this fucking stuff about you know ethics that just come in the way and we <laughs> okay i'm gonna st- <laughs> i'm gonna stop <laughs> trying to make this joke because some people are gonna take you me know seriously it's gonna be quoted out of context, oh yeah. yeah exactly like oh see they admit it uh <laughs> before we're on the news and they're like these are the trolls that are orchestrating gamergate it's like yep yep and uh, yeah so anyway so for, first uh, we have a few victories that happened uh so far uh there's this review on ign and they they said at the end, so basically, here's the verdict of their game. They say, Daylight has a good foundation of scary atmosphere and interesting bits of story, blah, blah, blah. And but what's important is the editor's note. Two former IGN employees worked on Daylight de- Daylight's development. To ensure an impartial review, we selected a reviewer who joined IGN after both had departed. Mm. So, so to make sure that this guy didn't know those two other guys and wasn't friends with them. See, this is this is what we wanted. It's this, good to see that this change is being implemented, and it's now. perfect. And sur- well, surprisingly, the, the review score is five point eight mediocre. But <laughs> that that just might be an unfortunate coincidence. Maybe the the game was actually bad. But see, that's important. Because... Well, but former former does. I mean, it could go either way, right? They could say if they left on bad terms, then maybe it could be a bad result. I I think that it might be reading a bit. Too much into oh it. yeah, no, I'm, I'm not saying that that the uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say that at all the score was influenced. Um, right. 
but uh, but yeah no that's good that's very very good i hope that everybody does that because the like even if they put it at the end like like this uh you know it's it's important that the user can notice information as part of them making their own conclusion because and that's the that's the whole thing behind gamergate it's because even before the the this whole like uh conspiracy thing happened it was always about we feel that the j video game journalism industry is not protecting the user but it's actually protecting the people who make games and you know just and sh making sure that you know shit games can be made and you know nobody is they're not accountable for it and that's basically the whole thing and All i mean right. it is good that these things are happening but it does point out basically what we've been talking about they do recognize that it is an issue and now they're making it relevant it's unfortunate that they have to say you know by the way we're keeping our journalistic integrity because we haven't in the past oh like, yeah that's that's now, why pro provided they weren't corrupt they wouldn't have to do shit like this but i appreciate that they're putting the effort forward now yep and another good news is a tweet by stefan totillo uh where he says uh that said i have told ub and will inform other pr we won't accept a post-release embargo tied to a review copy again so that's good so it's it's related to of course <clears throat> The embargo on uh, basically you you couldn't uh, release a review of the game, the new Assassin's Creed game Unity, before the game was actually released. What does, <laughs> and of course anybody that knows what, you know that that can just think a little bit, it it, it makes seem it makes it seems as if, well if they don't want people to release reviews before the game is released it's probably because there's problems and they want to maximize their sales so they don't want people informed about the possible issues of that game and of course we'll talk later on the podcast about this game and the uh, tons of fucking issues it has so yeah. it's gonna be fun alright so just a few a few other uh, interesting uh, pictures that I think are cool uh, somebody commented on basically because uh, the not your shield hashtag got lots of flack uh, in the previous uh, weeks by people who didn't really understand what the Not Your Shield tag was about. Uh, and I have this picture here by James Phillips who says, Not Your Shield is not like saying I have a black friend. It's the black friend telling you to stop using him with that excuse. Hashtag Gamergate. And it's, <laughs> and it's exactly true because I've seen many people criticizing Not Your Shield as being like, exactly that. Like, oh, it's just, just like those conservatives saying like, I have a black friend. No, it's it's actually black people who are like stop using me as an excuse to say that everybody else or gamers are racist or sexist or all that kind of bullshit and thank you james phillips for putting it very concisely well of course he had to because it's a tweet but, but i mean he did a good job anyways right uh, and, <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's very much uh what was that woman who was uh trying to uh criticized Stephen Colbert for his uh, comment. It was something about uh, Super Bowl name or something. Oh, um, you mean Sui Park? Yeah, Sui Park. She, she wanted to end Colbert because he made a joke and she didn't get it? Exactly. Well, and, okay, like, if you're, again, if you're offended by that, that's totally okay, and if you want to let people know that you're offended by it, that's totally okay, too. Yeah, However, totally. Um, not your shield, again, very much, I think, would sort of work in that respect, too. She... I believe there's an interview where she says that she's sort of speaking on behalf of all Asian Americans, which you can't say. Just no. because you are that race doesn't mean that you're speaking, like, you don't all think exactly the same. That is racism. If you mean, you're, like, <laughs> you're, you're telling me, Beard, that minorities are not hive minds. That's, wow. As, Never. As, as opposed to white people, where we all share the same likes and dislikes. Oh, totally. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's why I was so confused when... You said min minorities weren't like that. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's all right. One of the differences we share. And there's also I got a uh, cool quote from uh, Oliver Campbell who said, "So rather than actively boycott bad dads, he's talking strategy. Strategy here. He says we collectively boost the good ones for this holiday season." Then Kim Jong says, "Why not both?" Oliver Campbell says it makes us far more developer friendly and makes them more inclined to speak up in our favor. Uh, and then Davian Schubert says, how do you define good devs versus bad devs? And Oliver Campbell says, the ones that don't shit on their consumer base is a good start. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah, so and he, yeah, so, so he's talking because people wanted to, uh, you know, make uh, 
Gamergate uh, have more influence by, uh, you know, not purchasing games from developers who shit on Gamergate. Like, for example, uh, Borderlands the pre-sequel, because uh, I believe Anthony Birch said ridiculous things about Gamergate, but then Oliver Campbell says, you know, also buy the games by the people who come out and support us, so that, you know, they see that gamers have their back. And I think it's a good strategy. I think it's important. All right. Totally agree. Now, going into... Um, I guess the main news. Uh, so we have this website that will be released, I believe, in about uh, 46 days, uh, starting today. It is called My Media Critic. It's mymediacritic.org, and I, I saw it randomly on Twitter. And basically, what it says it will do is, My Media Critic will provide a place for readers and consumers to rate the different online media outlets, journalists, and YouTubers. Our initial alpha release will focus on the games industry. Once the alpha is successful, we'll grow into other industries as well. So that's really great because it allows users to police and rate the people that give them news, which gives them another incentive, I believe, to do their job properly. Yes. And uh, I can't wait for these four to six days just to see how badly Kotaku will probably rate on that thing. Uh, but yeah, no, so again have no idea uh, if this website is going to be good, if it's going to work, but it's definitely interesting that some people are taking the initiative to create things like that. Uh, so if you want to, of course, if you want to check it out, it's just basically a purple page so far, but, you know, it's going to be uh, in the description at the end of this podcast, as all the other links will be. All right. Uh, there's also uh, somebody else who created an add-on that basically tells you when an article that you're reading online is written by a member of the game's journal pros list. So people who are, you know, colluding behind everybody's back with their email list. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm going to post that again, and, you know, it's going to tell you basically, oh, this article was written by one of them. Because, of course, you can just remember everybody's name. Right. Speaking of Kotaku, I mentioned it a little bit ago, the, uh, there was this movement. Uh, we tried to basically get Kotaku off the first page uh, of the Steam Curators list by pushing another one, and basically it just succeeded right now. So Kotaku is of the first page of the Steam Curators. Of course, it doesn't mean to stop liking the other pages because, you know, they can always come back. All right. So the IGF is going to happen soon-ish, and they're, you know, starting to hire judges to, um, you know, judge games. And uh, <laughs> there's this um, this judge that was planned to be on the IGF who um, made some Twitter comments, um, and there was some backlash. Uh, I wonder why. Let's just let's take a look. So it's by Cutie Hunter Maddie. Um, she say, she's saying, judging IGF games now and automatically rating low any games with men in them, loving all this power. <laughs> That's beautiful, isn't I it? Mean, I mean, I, <laughs> I hope it's a joke. I think no, 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 it's not. No, no, no. Oh, oh you, you think it's a joke? Let's, let's yeah. see your second tweet. Okay. Uh, so we're just trying to figure out. Uh, okay, so throw oh, money at your no. game, gods, until oh, you feel God. better and move on from the buddies hurting for you. Going to bed will weigh up with my mentions filled with sludge just another day of not even being in games. And by the way, sorry, because, like, she writes terribly, so it makes me look when I read that I'm an idiot. <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> um, this is why I'm going to unfollow everyone in games tomorrow. You all just want to, s to self-pleasure the pain away while I get harassed. Block, 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 block. Guess what, GGers? I'm biased and everyone knows it. That's why I get to judge things too bad for you. I really don't care at this point if you feel guilty. You should. There is more. <laughs> and then, of course, the uh, IGF reacted. And they said, We've asked her not to reference IGF like this, even in jest slash goading in the future. And, uh, I was going to say, I, it seems to... Sorry, continue. Uh, yeah, you can comment just after this one. Uh, the first round judge in question, one of many hundreds this year, has asked to be removed from any duties <laughs> now slash going forward. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's, But, it, you know, it, it begs the question, why was she even there if she obviously hate games? Because there's other tweets that, that I might have not shown quite yet where it shows that she just hates gaming. Broken. She doesn't... It seems too broken to me. That that either looks like somebody, and and again, I'm not saying that this is what it is. This is just my first reaction from looking at those tweets. Yeah. She was either doing it as a joke or somebody 
not hacked her profile, but maybe somebody went on and just, like, made her say shit like that. Not that I even know this woman. Just just to clarify for everybody out there, oh, yeah. I don't know who this person is. I'm not trying to defend her. It's just the language seems so dumb. I don't understand why someone who wrote that straight-faced would ever be asked to judge anything. But like, see, not just games, just things in general. <laughs> yeah, I understand. And, and to be fair, in a perfect world, I don't think that she should lose her job for making comments like this, especially if it's a joke. But it's because now, uh, it's because now, you know, it, let's say a man said, oh, I'm going to just rate poor any video game with a woman in it. You know, people would have fucking thrown a shitstorm. And there's clearly, I think, a double standard going there. So... You know, I don't know. Yeah, at, at, at least you know what? Like when it comes to judging, and we talked about this too, even just with writing scores. Like we all have our personal biases, yeah, and that's okay. But if you go on Twitter and you're just like yelling this shit, this is the equivalent of you're giving you know, people the impression, at least, that you're unbiased, and you shouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, totally. You're, so, you're yeah. supposed to do your best to stay impartial, but. So, and she reacted, of course, uh, thanks to IGF News for throwing me under the bus with those comments. Glad to have that line drawn in the wow. sand. Uh, what do you, what, the fuck? <laughs> what do you want? What wow. did you expect? Oh, boy. Well, no, no it's because, I don't know, I guess she's a victim because she has to. <laughs> and I have, um, I have more, actually, from, from that whole fucking thing happening. I'm, I'm going to open it. Uh, I oops. I can't believe it. Like, why would you... <laughs> Never mind. No, it's it's uh yeah. So I'm gonna actually bring it up. It's other tweets that that she made. Um, so first, let's uh, let's look at this one. Kill all men. Yeah. Three words she wants to hear. <laughs> <laughs> she seems like a nice gal. I mean, I'm sure. I'm being harassed. <laughs> <laughs> Threatened to no, kill but me. it's you know just I'm going to hiding. And see, there's more here. Like, I get to decide things and you don't sad face for your entire life. You're upset that I have power and you have none. Go back to your hashtag and pretend you are important. Don't worry, soon all of Blizzard will be my cuckold and even WoW will be completely pink and will ban all men. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think she's probably just trolling at this point. And yeah, of course, it shows some of the the things that I've posted. And here there's a... a a uh, tweet by Ben Kuchera. My mentions are are now Gamergate celebrating how IGF News handled this, so I'm getting off social media for a bit. Aw. <laughs> it's like, I think they did it good. They, like, some, some of the, one of their judges said something stupid, and they were like, well, maybe you shouldn't judge, because you're, you know, you're making us look bad, and we already look bad. So, yep. yeah. So, oh, yeah. I think they did a great job, actually. It's been yeah. happening quite a bit, and we did talk about this, even when we spoke to uh, Andrew in that regard. Like, it, yeah. it's tricky. If Twitter isn't... I, I can't believe, you know, for someone that doesn't use Twitter very often, anyone who follows me knows this. Um, I'm a bit I just, more active. Oh, totally. And, and I mean, occasionally, uh, when I watch... Uh, this GG shit, particularly stuff on the news, it gets me really pissed off and then I want to <laughs> post. But again, you have to remember it's just like Facebook in that you know, anytime you apply for a new job, everybody can see what you're saying and doing. It's not you know, it is a public forum. It's not your place to just like post whatever you want. So you and have as, to be careful. And as opposed to stupid shit you might say out loud, this will stay. <laughs> so, and, and of oh, course yeah. nobody nobody's like, everybody can have a brain fart and just say something totally stupid online. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I believe even there that you should, you know, just try not to be too judgmental. But if it's a trend, you know, <laughs> it's okay to be like, hey, maybe, uh, yeah, I don't want anything to do with you. Anyways, so somebody else, Brendan Keogh. I just, just emailed the IGF to say I'm not doing any more judge judging until they apologize to Maddie and I implore other judges to do the same. Well... <laughs> Too Brandon, bad. In my opinion, you are wrong. Christine Love. I will definitely not be doing any judging for DIGF until they've apologized to Maddie. What a horrible thing to do to someone. Wow. Yeah. How, like how they dare do. they? How dare they say, hey, maybe you shouldn't be one of her judges because you're totally, like, oh, you're shitting no. on... <laughs> Alexander, I'm sorry I read ahead a little okay. bit. Okay, well, oh, I'm sure she's totally, totally reasonable. Let's see. In a way, I feel sorry for these GG kids. It must be really painful to feel like everyone is laughing at you and no one's listening. And of course, there's again these tweets by uh, 
Wow, so a new and of course there's another one. A new tactic of the dangerous, hateful right wing. Because of course everybody knows Gamergate is right wing, am I right? Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> all all right wing crazy. Um it's to take a person's social media profile wildly out of context and rationalize It's Twitter, Lay Alexander. It has no context. It's Twitter. It's literally a tweet. <laughs> and we also posted the other tweets that were around. And again, for somebody who, like, for the people that are getting tweets that they're just, like, uh, you know, threatening to kill people, and so now people are banning, like, pro-GG people, that yeah. does show how much weight Twitter has, so you can't have it one way or the other. If it was a fucking joke, which even I'm going to say again, I, I don't, I can't believe that Maddie is stupid enough to genuinely put that stuff. I think that she was probably joking around and thought that no one would notice. These judges, you have a right to not take somebody on if they're doing something stupid like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Elizabeth Simmons, who is, I believe, an illustrator for a big um, video games website. I believe it's Kotaku, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's Polygon. Um, and she says, hey, Newsflash, IGF News, sexism against men isn't a real thing. Responding seriously to allegations from gamer gators make you look like shit. Wow. And, of course, there's um, other tweets from her where she says she, she literally is, uh, is sexist against men. Of course, I don't have them, like, right here, right now, but maybe they'll show up later. Who knows? Uh, I might have them in my list. Uh, but, hey, that's uh, – so that's that's this whole thing. So – Basically, no. It's I think it's it's kind of good. Like, cause of course the IGF, lots of people were uh, didn't really like the IGF because they didn't really reveal how the games were revealed. There was of course quotes from uh, uh, the, what's the guy who made the Binding of Isaac who said um, McMillan. Yeah, Edmund McMillan, who said like that. You know, some judges were like, "Hey, this game is better, but th these people deserve to win. Like, uh, w would benefit more from winning, so we'll make these guys win instead." So they have lots of things to do when it comes to, uh, you know, <laughs> not being uh, not being total idiots. But, oh, by the way, no, actually, I do have... Uh, the IGF did release a bigger blog post, and I think it'd be fun to read it. So let's, uh, let's do that. IGF News. Uh, an apology and a statement on IGF inclusivity. Earlier today, one of our returning judges and jurors resigned from the festival following an extensive campaign from third parties regarding a tweet that was made some days ago. Claims about which we, all, we had already investigated and very quickly found to be made entirely in jest. So, what, what did you do? Did you just ask her? And then she said, oh yeah, totally a joke, you guys. I wasn't serious. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, uh, anyways, um, and one of the reasons we invite hundreds of judges to take part in the first round of the IGF process is explicitly so that we can have a diversity of opinion from developers of games, both judge, but both sorry, large and small, acad academics, jour uh, journalists, and other representatives of games culture at large. We believe that it is only through this diversity that the IGF can properly represent and celebrate the advancement and evolution of the medium. Well, again, it's just this fucking PR statement. Yeah. Um, it's boring. <laughs> Moving on. But, you know, um, I guess... But no, again, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised. Like anybody who's ever had a job ever, if you notice, you know, if you happen to work at a fast food restaurant, they ask you to wear uniforms. That's because if you come in with, like, a Molson Canadian shirt on and you're working at McDonald's, they might think that you're trying to promote... You know, underage drinking or drinking in general, and they ask you not to do that. Again, we we talked about this. There is, uh, oh, you like, know, there is, there is a point in time in which your freedoms end. Like, uh, we talked about this. You have to make time. concessions, basically. Oh, totally, totally. Like, I would love to have giant facial hair. However, I, you know, I was just working in the tourism industry, and it makes you more approachable if you don't. So it's just one of those sacrifices. Like, I have the right to look however I want, but they have the right not to hire me if I don't fit what they want, right? Yeah, because of course, so, you know, people will judge you based on your appearance, and we have a, a story totally, on that. Totally, and the things that you say, but there we go. Oh, yeah. All right, so, and I have, of course, um, another tweet uh, reacting to this IGF thing. Um, so he says, Seems like Gamergate got a hold of everyone's information who submitted a game to the IGF. Can we stop this, please? Fellow indies, if you're anywhere on those lists, please take precautions to protect yourself because Gamergate are savage monsters. <laughs> please RT that link because it's very important. <laughs> you know, Gamergate are savage monsters. How dare they try to, you know, 
demand integrity and all that kind of shit. Uh, and by, by the way, the, the reason why Gamergate wanted these addresses was to inform them of the corruption that was found on the IGF and tell them, you know, if you want to submit your game to this show, think about it because they might just be like, oh, well, the game, this game's better, but we want our friends to win or these people who deserve it better, which, yeah. you know, I guess it's fair to send them this information. All right, so that's now really uh, all we have for the IGF, at least for now. All right, so there is a more corruption that happens. So I have this other thing based, uh, it's on a blog. I'm just going to bring it up right here. All right. So this one's taken from uh, a blog, yeah, like I said, um, by a, of one angry gamer, and it's by a uh, former Bioware developer who says, I'll condemn Kotaku for shitty journalism. The tides are turning. It was because of the scandal known as Gamergate that games journalism has been put under a microscope to examine previous practices. Oh, actually, yeah, no, it's actually, it's actually by, I believe, oh, that thing. Yeah, okay. Sorry, that... <laughs> That thing's not important. Let's just skip over because <laughs> because I think I think we talked about this early. It was just a different article. Sorry. All right, moving on. Uh, so yeah, there's there's uh we talked about GamerGate and how there would be like I guess just uh, news that would be you know there are good news, there's bad news. So basically, Intel is now back advertising with Gamma Sutra officially. Uh, and they said that uh, basically, um, well, you know, I'll just, I'll just first, I'll post uh, some of the pictures. If I can find it. Ah, right here. All right. I'm gonna put it on screen for you. It's a tweet by by Gamma Sutra who says, "Yes, Intel reinstated ads on Gamma Sutra. Yes, it's a paid campaign. No, it's not an ad service. Thanks for reading." And of course, people were. Uh, asking themselves questions because, like uh, you can see on this picture, first um, the ad was there, but it had ad choices on there, which means that it would be advertisement coming from an aggregator. Um, but uh, then it was later confirmed by Intel themselves that yeah, no, they 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 want, of course, you know, to promote their products to all kinds of gamers and that the people who read Gamma Sutra are also part of it and that they're important and all that kind of stuff and they didn't want to take any sides and somebody has a reaction posted um, you know just this picture of Gamma Sutra and be uh, you know just to be like think think about what you're doing Intel so again so it's from from one of their articles gamers are over these obtuse shit slingers these wailing hyper consumers these childish internet arguers they are not my audience my audience they don't have to be yours gamma sutra 80, uh, 28th of august 2014 so again if you want gamers to be your audience intel that's not the right website cuz <laughs> they said themselves that they don't well, yeah they have, they have the right to do that but again i mean <sighs> I, I don't know why they went back. I guess maybe there was just a lot of internal struggle, I suppose. Like, maybe it was the same sort of idea that they're just, like, they didn't want to hurt people's feelings who were inside Intel. But, again, like I said last week, if you don't like them being on that site, then don't go to their site. When they start losing money, they'll be like, oh, maybe people don't like giving money to people that hate on them. Yep. All right, so we also had, uh, you know, you commented on basically this thing called, uh, well, basically the pro Gamergate people being banned from Twitter. Uh, one of them was Nero uh, or Milo Yiannopoulos, or a uh, journalist who did, uh, who released articles on, you know, Gamergate early, and he was banned. Now he's back on Twitter, but he was banned for some reason, which is ridiculous uh, and there's basically there's been discussion about this thing called wham uh, basically they're they're, they're a, basically an organization who basically got for some reason moderating powers over Twitter accounts so they could just you know ban people and pe so people from Gamergate who are like are they gonna ban all of us what's gonna go on um, and then people were just being basically scared that they would not be unbiased. Uh, I don't know why Gamergate's thinking that. Let's go see at the person who is, you know, the leader of, well, Wham, you know, the person who, uh, oh, she posted that comic on Twitter saying that it's perfection. So it's a comic that says, 
Uh, first character is like, we've got, we've got a live one here. He's contracted Gamergate, displaying all the symptoms. Vomiting misogynist bile, postules of entitlement, comment diarrhea. Shoot him in the sun with the rest. Tim, there's a tear in your suit. I, I, I feel fine. I, I just hate when girls are allowed to play the games I like. Oh dear God, let me out. Which of course is an entire, wow. is a big fucking straw man because... <laughs> Like, who the fuck thinks like that? Like, oh, girls are allowed to play the games. I and I just don't <laughs> be off that they keep thinking this. Like, for games, again, let's look at Hatred. They get a group of people together to sign a petition to stop shit like this being released. Did that ever happen when Gone Home was going to be released? Did that ever happen when fucking The Last of Us was going to be released? Did that ever happen when Metroid Other M was going to be released? No, because nobody cared that it was women playing these games or that female main characters. Nobody cares. I'm not going to say that the harassment doesn't happen, but we're not a boys club. We're not trying to stop people from being in it, and I'm not just speaking it's, on my It's behalf. crazy, and like, I, because I, everybody... experienced this. And, and it's, it's true for everybody. Like, if you... If there's a girl you like, and then you learn that she enjoys playing the same video games as you, you like her more, not less. It's fucking ridiculous. And, and you know what? It's fucking insane. Like, there's no. It may be a bit of a stereotype, and like in that, I'm willing to say that there probably is some basis. Yes, there probably are people that spend the most time on the internet that might not have the same social skills as other people. Did you ever think that maybe they're on the internet because they don't have the same social skills as everybody else? It's not universal, but even in the real world, there's people with shitty social skills. It happens all the time. Oh like, yeah. Think, think about idiots that you run across just in the real world. And even there. Just the the internet has so many people on it, and if you're a gamer, you're ultimately going to run into these people. Yes, women are harassed. So is everyone else. Like, everyone is harassed. It's unfortunate that these people are having their addresses. Like, I'm not trying to say that these people who are being chased out of their homes, although personally, well. I feel like they're overreacting. I'm not <laughs> trying to say that they deserve it. They certainly do not. However... We're not petitioning. Like, I'm getting really pissed off that they think the Gamers Gate is about us just not letting women in. No, there's tons of uh, Gamer Gate supporters who are women, and of course they don't count. Let's erase them. Or, oh, actually, I have a few comments later on. You know, in the segment that we're gonna have about just stupid shit that anti Gamer Gate says, I have a few comments about people just being mean to women who support Gamer Gate, and I'm like, and how and can you, know, you <laughs> how can yeah, you not it's... see? You're being an asshole. It's unfortunate because, you know, and, and again, we've talked about this a lot, so I don't want to sound broken record-ish here, but it's unfortunate because I have run into, actually, I can think of three women, just in my personal experience that I've run into, that are interested in games that because I love games so much, I've introduced other things to them. Like, uh, again... My, uh, one of my ex-girlfriends was really into The Sims, so I introduced her to Skyrim. Now she loves the Elder Scrolls series. There's another girl that I met that she basically, again, didn't know a lot of games, was too scared to like ask other people about it because she felt that she would be judged. Not because anything had happened to her, but because she's just like, you know, oh, you know, boys and games, this is the experience that, you know people have told me about. I'm like, no, it is really not. So like you're that. you're saying you're introduced girls to more games? You gender traitor beard, not I know. <laughs> uh, just to go back on Wham really quickly. Oh, who's that on a Wham stream? Oh, that girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna And this is all I'm gonna say about it. Alright. Anyways, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm done. Where's Gamer Gates Where's Gamer Gates saying that they might be biased? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, there's this other thing, basically talking about how Polygon accepted money from Microsoft to make a documentary about themselves. So let's let's go over it. It's a it's a post by Kotaku, uh, not Kotaku. Sorry, it's on Reddit. Um, so Polygon acknowledged accepting uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars from Microsoft to create a documentary series promoting Polygon. The estimated budget for this documentary, Press Reset, the story of Polygon, was uh, seventy five thousand. Uh, yeah, basically. I've seen budget estimates on IMDB uh, be off as much as 100 percent, but never by a factor of 10. I did some more digging to see what kind of coverage could have been influenced when I ran into their next-gen reviews. Thus far, Next 
gen console recommendations break up like this and then they show uh, Xbox One, PS4, and all those other kinds of things and <laughs> it's kinda well I'm gonna post a link you'll be able to dig into that a bit later but uh, mm. again Polygon being corrupt and it's not good it sucks but uh, moving on so there's this thing that happened um, that's some people might say like is it really related to video games is it really related to Gamergate but it sort of is have you heard of uh, this whole thing uh, called what people on the internet have called a shirt storm no okay so basically it's um, it started all with an article that was written by Chris Plant and Ariel Duhame Ross now Chris Plant used to be used to work at uh, now he works at the verge of course because that's where the article is but he used to work for polygon oh that's strange and the title of the this article is uh, I don't care if you landed a spacecraft on a comet your shirt is sexist and ostracizing and it's basically about basically in an interview this guy who worked who's basically the lead who basically landed a a spacecraft on a comet at NASA, you know, something that's never been done ever in the whole of humanity. Basically, he had this shirt that shows like scantily clad women with guns and sh and stuff. And <laughs> some people, he got some shit. Oh my god! Because people were upset at the shirt that he was wearing, and 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 really, like, it's this fucking title. I think just refutes itself. I don't care if you landed a spacecraft on a comet. Your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> is sexist and ostracizing like I'm butthurt at your shirt and he had to apologize in tears this guy because he said like I have upset people it's crazy and like I'm really sorry and the craziest thing is that this shirt was designed and made to him for his birthday by a female artist friend and <laughs> it's ins it it's it's like that comic that you sent me I think this was like two or three days ago um, and for people who want to see the shirt I'm gonna bring it up just give me keep talking beer yeah yeah I'd like to see it that uh, and you'll have to remind me who it was but she drew the uh, female KKK members killing uh, <laughs> fucking Brianna Wu <laughs> Brianna Wu yeah I mean again like, <laughs> it was I was like these like this is what they're so angry about are these scantily clad women be, uh, apparently being sexually objectified but they don't care when it's them and I mean again I don't oh think yeah when they do it it's fine scantily clad women is okay. sexual so, objectification because it happens to men all the time so you can see so you can see it here on the left I don't know if you can see it right I'm just gonna try to zoom in that's uh, that's basically the shirt. So of course it's like sis, sexist pig, and of course Jessica Valenti, who's uh, been against Gamergate, and you know she writes a lot about feminism and that kind of, st of stuff. You can see her at the beach with a T-shirt that says "I bathe in male tears." Of course nobody minds that, uh, at least the people who criticize Gamergate, because you know she's just, you know, uh, she can wear whatever she wants. Don't you dare criticize him, and it's like. <laughs> It's crazy. Um, and of course, because of that shirt, I don't know, I think I have one that's better on the actual article. Um, you know, just, just so you guys can see it, I'm going to try to bring it up. I don't know exactly if it's going to be any better, but I think it's important. All right. So is that any better? That's what it looks uh, like. A little bit, yeah. I mean, again, the, the shirt itself is just like, like I don't see it, but I'm going to just it's, go it's, it's just It's just women in leather yeah, outfits. I'll just take the word for it but I don't know it, like it's not it's not even na there's no nakedness and it's <laughs> I'm I don't like I'm trying to be impartial when I say it. like if they're again if you're offended by someone wearing like a scantily clad woman shirt that's fine like you can be offended that's totally okay like he's, but... he's a grown ass man can't he just fucking wear any t-shirt that he well, wants I don't know man I just I don't I feel bad like I don't get it I don't I don't understand all of this, this hatred, I really don't. Um, it's anyways. I don't know. And uh, of course, he got uh, the the one who wrote uh, Chris Plan, who wrote the article, uh, got criticized for it. And um, yeah, I'm gonna bring up. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and here's what he um, here's what he wrote as a reaction. Oh, I can't wait for all of. Deleting the... Twitter on the phone for the weekend. See y'all next week. 
as the picture says at the bottom, uh, so basically he's a guy who just tried to yep. like erase one of the greatest fucking achievements because he landed a fucking spacecraft on a comet. You can't even begin to imagine the work that he had to put to do this because like there's no fucking wiki how on how to do it. It's the first time it was ever fucking made. Like he's a very smart, he's probably a very fucking smart scientist. And now because you erased that and you criticized him, now people are t telling you you're an asshole. And you're like, well, I can't handle being criticized, so I'm just going to run away now. Good job. <laughs> oh, my God. And it's not, it's not all. So here's, um, here's a little argument here that was, I believe, on Tumblr that just illustrate exactly what is wrong with it. So first we have the spectacular spider girl who says, a big fucking surprise, Chris Plot of Vox, formerly of Polygon, decided to shit on a scientist who just landed the spacecraft on a comet because his shirt has semi-naked semi women on it. Not naked, semi-naked. And the real fucking kicker, as I said, the shirt was a birthday gift from his friend, who is a girl who designed and made the shirt herself. This man, this guy who made a fucking monumental leap forward for science, who was brought to tears during his apology because feminists couldn't fucking deal with his shirt and decided to dogpile him. Seriously, fuck each and every one of these people who attacked him. And, of course, Skip in Outer Space replied, he chose to wear a shitty stupid shirt to a huge event he knew would be recorded. He made his bed and has to lay in it. No sympathy. Seriously, though, what the fuck did he think would happen? Someone at the place should have told him to change because he's also representing his team and the mission. And that is what he decided was appropriate. Again, no sympathy. And send no help replies, Are you saying that he deserved it because of what he was wearing? Gosh, that sounds awfully familiar. <laughs> oh, shit. And boom. <laughs> so, well, there you go. I'd say that that's a little different. Um, personally, I, I sort of agree with both viewpoints. Again, uh, like, I don't feel, though, though I disagree with their actions, I don't feel I can say, like, they should have just, again, it's okay to be offended by things, I guess, and it's yeah, okay I to guess. voice your opinion. But, um, I mean, you I had to fucking apologize, uh, and it's the, like... Yeah. But again, like we just talked about, I personally, and, and again, it's totally okay if you disagree with me. I think that is a discussion worth having. But yep. again, he, he was at his job. Like, you have to be careful because people are going to see that shit. Now, am I saying that because he wore that shirt, it means that he's a misogynist and, you know, he deserved to be brought to tears? No. But if, I mean, if that's what's going to happen, right? That's what's going to happen. I don't, I don't feel particularly I mean, bad for like, either parties, personally. It's... It's a sh like it's so unimportant next to like we put a fucking like. <laughs> oh, it is, but but then again, so is. And sure, you can you can. Like this is what we've been talking <sighs> about, right? Like, here's the thing: if like though I disagree with where the feminist movement is going today, if that's what people want to support, that's okay. Very much like you know that we talked about, like uh, you know, there's particular games that I don't particularly care for and I will criticize because I don't care for not that there's anything wrong with them yeah yeah it's the same thing with Anita Sarkeesian I don't agree with any of her uh, points but do I think that she should be allowed to say them certainly like it is ridiculous and I will still make fun of her too because I think I have a right to do that as much as she can make fun of me that's fair but where where, where I draw the line actually and I, I believe you probably do too is when people dogpile him and insult him and say that he's a terrible person just for wearing a shirt that happens to have... Like, what is bad with a shirt that has... Like, say, sure, it's an eccentric shirt. It's kind of crazy because, and you know, it's, it's not necessarily something you would see anyone wear. It's not necessarily something I would wear. Uh, well, I, you know, after this shitstorm, I almost want to buy one just so I can be like, fuck you guys. But <laughs> oh, I mean, wait, Again, I think that you totally have the right to say that. But like to take it into different territory, I guess, if if his shirt said fuck the police on it and he was still just talking about landing an asteroid on the moon like nothing else, there could be people who were like, you know, why are you hating on police officers? And I do know people like this. Uh, you know, why are yeah. you hating on police officers? They defend our country, blah, blah, blah. Even though I disagree with it, like, people are going to get harassed, and I think it's going to happen both ways. Quite frankly, like, my stance on this whole harassment thing as it is right now is, again, people should just 
get thicker skins. And I know that everybody argues against this, but I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, we can either police no, I agree. the internet where nobody ever critiques anybody ever because they're going to take it for harassment, or we allow everything. And personally, I think we should allow everything. And just, like, how you respond to things affects how they think of you, just like in the real world. Like, if I were to wear a shirt that says, fuck the police when I'm meeting, you know, whoever... <laughs> a police officer? And, no, it's not a good exactly, idea. <laughs> right? And they think less of me because of it. They have a right to do that, and I, I should have thought otherwise. I, I feel bad for this guy, but on the same token, I don't... But they said... You know, the, the thing that the article said, again, is that their shirt is sexist and ostracizing. See, I don't agree with that. But I think yeah, that they have a right to say that. Right? Again, it's, it's, um, a, it's an easy thing. I, I don't agree with Anita Sarkeesian and, like, a lot of her points, but I think it is a discussion worth having. I think that she should still do her feminist frequency show. Would I ever give her, like, the ridiculous amount of money that she got? <laughs> oh, her? yeah, no, Hell, no, no. But... If she wants to talk about these issues in games, I like, and if and we course, want to disagree with her, and of course, uh, yeah, and of and of course, I'm t I totally agree that everybody should have freedom of speech to say anything that they do, even Anita Sarkeesian. But I mean, shouldn't it be? Because the problem I have really with Anita Sarkeesian, if that, she, if that is that she uses logical fallacies like cherry picking, and she even misrepresents reality. She lies to to basically put her point forward, and I think. It's not just subjective to criticize somebody who's lying, um, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh no, and that's that's fair. But and then you come out and you say, and see, I wonder, and, and people, because people you even can't, you can't stop. I I don't want to say dumb people. I guess you can't stop gullible <laughs> people from being yeah. gullible. Like if people think, um, you, I don't even know, a... that, that this man wearing this particular shirt means that he hates women. I I think that I'm objective and like saying that that doesn't make any sense. Like if someone's wearing a shirt by that and your feelings are hurt, it doesn't mean that they are a misogynist. Yeah. If someone says that, then you just think less of them for it. Yeah. And one of the the criticism was that um, this kind of um, shirt would pull away women from uh, these types of jobs because it was sexist and misogynist. And of course, somebody. I forgot exactly who said that, but somebody said, I wonder what makes women more scared of going in these types of jobs. This guy's shirt or this, the fact that everybody, like, uh, more, more in feminist circle or just saying that everybody in, like, I don't know, the technological in industry is a misogynist and it's super hard for women. And, like, I wonder who's fucking, you know, making it worse. Um, yep. So, again, it's, it's not, I don't... I think it's it's such a big fucking shitstorm out of something that it's it's a tempest in a glass of water. Oh, I do certainly, and it, it's tricky. We've talked about this before. Um, oh, and yeah. It does change gears a little bit from uh, roleplay podcast, but I it's our show. We'll talk about whatever the fuck we want. But oh, yeah. I am starting to see it from your point of view, in that I I don't want to say that I don't like feminists it, because that's not necessarily. But it's the true. same people. Like, I guess the link with Gamergate is that is it's, it's the same people. Like he oh, he was certainly. he wasn't one of the founders of of Polygon, uh, right. <laughs> Yeah. It's the it, same. It's, it's the feminist movement that now it just seems like and they games, are sort of fear mongering. Because there's I, even like even sexy women uh, in games like will be criticized and saying like, "Oh, this game is sexist." There's even a thing you wanted to to talk about uh, regarding yes, that. Yeah. We can talk about it Which, later or yeah. now if you want. Um, but but <laughs> uh, before actually, I would just have one thing just to close off the this whole shirt storm thing. And it's Certainly. basically our yeah. good old friend uh, Jordy Tate, you know, who said that uh, all of Gamergate should be in concentration camps last week. Well, he commented on this uh, very particular issue. Let's see what he says. I'm sure it's super reasonable and not batshit insane. Feminism is several orders of magnitude more important for the human race than rocket plus comet. In other news, abolition more important than airplane. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, uh, I'm I, I'm pretty sure that he doesn't like understand. I you, Jordy. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm, what? It, like, oh my! Like, and and you know, I guess the second thing he said could be debatable, but it, then again, we don't even fucking know how different the world would be without these two specific innovations. But when it comes to 
like it depends what you say by feminism of course like if you're talking about men and women should be equal it's very important today's feminism but, not but really. then he should have said humanitarianism instead he, he uh, ah there you go beard <laughs> yeah that's like, fair that's the thing it's it is a stupid comment because he said feminism and i'm sure that that's how he would twist it but again then don't identify with feminists like the feminist movement today at least from what i've seen extreme feminists yeah. Again, is turning into this that I survive on men's tears, which is like if you want to be hateful and scare other individuals, like you're just weakening yourselves, you're weakening your own position. It's it reminds me of that PETA thing. They found out that PETA were putting down all of the animals that get taken into their shelter because they believe that once they're domesticated, they're like mutants or something. Like it's just that's, these weird, yeah, weird. Let, let's, read a, let, let's read a bit of. Uh what the the woman who designed that shirt had to say because she she did react um today actually uh she says uh, you know from her own blog on blogspot she says hello internet land i felt i needed to write some words for all the questions comments and feedback being received about the shirt i made for him that had caused such a stir I would like to thank each and every person who has supported matt in his amazing achievement and who has asked after and complimented my hobby as well as my husband's artwork on Dr. Taylor. Unfortunately, there has been lots of negativity in this, which I do understand, but is also very upsetting. Dr. Matt Taylor is an amazing, kind, loving, and sensitive person, which I would, by the way, tend to believe because he cried because during he his cried apology. During his apology. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm going to keep reading. I never expected him to wear my gift uh, to him for such a big event and was surprised and deeply moved that he did. I made that shirt for his birthday last month as I make clothes just as a hobby and he asked if I would make him one. He's a close friend, very loved friend, uh, so I made sure I did this for his birthday present. I appreciate that everyone is entitled to their opinion and having worked with people and events for a long time, I have certainly learned that you are never going to please everyone. I defy any living person to tell me truthfully that they have never made an action that may have caused an unwanted reaction in their lives, even with the best intentions in mind. I am so proud of Matt and his achievements, and you should be because he landed a fucking uh, <laughs> a thing on a comet. <laughs> but, uh, and, and the fact he is an interesting and very brave person to do what he did with the very sweet um, gesture he made towards my gift and to wear his individuality with pride. It has certainly made history more exciting and bold. I do read all your comments and have made, but uh, you have all made, sorry, but there are so many I just can't reply to you all personally. The people that have attacked and said horrible things I'm not going to engage with as the supportive and very lovely comments I have also received outweigh those tenfold. I would like to take this opportunity to try and answer all the questions I have been getting. There's no meaning behind the shirt. I just bought material and sewed it together. Nothing sinister at all was meant behind it at any point. It was just a bold and individual fashion item. Liar. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> Sorry. I did, I, did, I did make Matt's shirt. You can see it from a few weeks back on his Twitter feed and our studio feed. Then she links to Twitter. As well as my Instagram. There is a sh similar shirt available on the internet, but... As the material is readily available, this is no huge surprise. I customized Matt's shirt so it does have slight differences to the one already online as it was a very personal thing. I'm not going to apologize for having a hobby. In actual fact, I am a nobody who just crafted a shirt for a friend. I never expected it to get to this magnitude and I humbled and overwhelmed. I'm genuinely surprised that so many of you wants the shirt <laughs> the shirts i'm no professional seamstress by any means my clothes are made with love and time put into it yes i can make other clothes and pin up male and female printed material is readily available yes i can make ladies shirts if i was to recreate the same print and other similar prints from the fabric designer i use for these shirts i need to be very clear that they are far from perfect and uh, yeah th then she keeps on going but i think yeah she just basically I think she explained it very clearly that you know it's she just made a, a a shirt for a friend that she likes and that's all there is to it really and I can't like and she doesn't really understand why people are reacting but of course the she said as she said the, the, the she received more comments that support her so and it makes me it, it makes me offended it, by everything 
it makes me feel a bit better uh, about myself. Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> Um, so, uh, you wanted to talk about, because we commented about this, uh... Yeah, so I will talk about the Sweden thing. So, basically, this is off of an an article on The Escapist. It was written by, uh, Bob Chipman, uh, more commonly known as Movie Bob, which is, uh, I'm, I'm gonna read the excerpt from it, but basically, uh, Sweden is going to be implementing another, uh, sort of, uh, ESRB rating system to their video games. Uh, so... Uh, Data Peschel Brenschen, a Sweden games industry organization, has been given roughly $36,000 grant by the state-funded innovation agency Vinova to study and create a system that would provide ratings for games released in Sweden, indicating the level of sexism and or whether or not the game promotes gender equality. At this time, Data Peschel Brenschen has not yet determined whether they would recommend these labels be applied to retail games in the manner of the ESRB ratings or as a stamp of approval that game publishers could be used in marketing. Reach for comment as to the potential for a focus on diversity to detract from the creative process of developers by English language Swedish news outlet The Local, project manager Anton Albin was quoted as stating, Of course, games can be about fantasy, but they can be so much more than this. They can also be a form of cultural expression, reflecting society or the society we are hoping for. Games can help us to create more diverse workplaces and can even change the way we think about things. Games could be so so much more. Games could be so much more, but they could also be so much less. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Let's restrict... uh... Well... (laughs) So basically, if I understand correctly, they're adding this. Um, they they want to add a label to to label misogynist games or basically, sexist yeah. games. Yep. Which is uh, it, because again, like you have to understand that sexist is very fucking subjective, and that a label is bound to be something that's objective by nature, or at least more objective. So. Just a, a, because what's sexist for one person is not for another person. Uh, of course, there's some things that most people would agree, you know, most sane people would agree, yes, that's pretty fucking sexist. And sexism exists, and it's a terrible fucking thing. Let's be clear about that. Um, but, you know, there's this movement that, you know, is around that's just like really overblowing what sexism truly is. And it makes, you know, in, in that kind of environment that we live now, it makes this kind of label, I believe, really untru- untrustworthy and batshit insane. And it's, it's, it really, again, blows my mind because, like, especially from these circles, from the social justice warrior circles, what they say all the time is that you can't judge a woman on what she's wearing. She can wear whatever the fuck, whatever the fuck she wants. And actually, it's liberating that a woman can wear anything and not being be criticized for it. But then when a video game character dresses the same way, it's bad somehow, and you should cover that skin, lady. And it just blows my mind every time. I'm like, why? What, what's... And again, it goes back to this whole fucking male gaze bullshit. Um, because how dare a man ever enjoy seeing a woman naked? That's terrible. Um, so so I don't uh, share the exact same you as you, but we're pretty much in the same thing. I think that... Like, if... Okay, so this isn't a branch of the government, so it's not going to be implemented, like, 100%. And also, for a bit of context, um, it says in the uh, paragraph above that that actually Sweden also wanted to make, like, a gender-neutral toy catalog, so they don't even have, like, a boy section and a girl section for fear that they would, like, you know, (laughs) subjugate a gender to identify with something. Oh, man. Which I know... well, and so so here's my feel on it. Like, if they want to take that standpoint, I think that that's interesting, and they should be allowed to do it. Um, as far as the sexism thing, I would agree with you. Like, but it, it, if it's going to be like the ESRB rating, I imagine it's going to be something like, you know, they'll they'll draw standards that they believe are reasonable. I imagine it'll be like, you know, I, I <laughs> rated M for misogyny. And it'll be like, <laughs> scantily clad or getting beat up or like killed or something um which so now, again n- though i disagree with it i think that well, they it, should be allowed to do you it, know you know you know how in germany there's uh, basically they, they replace most of the violence like the blood with uh, just like black oil and yeah. often people become robots or something so 
maybe there's going to be a different version of games in Sweden where just all women NPCs have God mode on, activated at all times, yeah, and you can't exactly. kill them. It'll and now, like, and now only the men can die, and we achieved equality. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be perfect. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So. No, I, I totally, and I, I don't want to take his comment out of uh, context. Like I think when Anton said that it is like cultural expression, I agree 100. And I think that by limiting that, by putting, you know, telling people what they can and cannot create, you're just limiting. Like you're stopping freedom of speech which in my opinion is very important because it's creative expression which is a commentary like I don't know as long as it's not a word hate speech you should be allowed to do whatever you want and harassment is not hate speech yeah all right <laughs> and um, so yeah um, now next we should probably move on to the story about um, uh, well, actually, it's kind of like more video games related, so I'm actually going to move that later on first. We're going to talk about the new Dota hero. But first, uh, let's just go quickly over a few pictures of shit anti gamer gate says, where we just laugh at people, uh, at stuff that stupid people said, because it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just entertaining. So remember Jordy Tate again, who. Um, said that everybody from Gamergate and honestly like the more I read the post of Jordy Tate the more I feel he's a fucking sociopath and I'm not saying it lightly uh, <laughs> so let's go with uh, Jordy Tate. Was he the one that said that we should all be in the gas chamber? Yeah yeah gas chamber like uh, people who oh, support right. Gamergate should all die uh, and stuff <laughs> and he's not just like he seems to believe it but anyways um, let's have this one why aren't anti-Gamergate people condemning my death threats but Gamergate is doing nothing but, it's because entities have no need to deflect. Prove that Gamergate is related to any death threats, please. I'm the one who made the death threats towards Gamergate, because the world would be better off if they all slid into a volcano. That's nice, you know, <laughs> this, uh, this is a nice guy. No, I'm, I, I love him. Uh, oh, yeah, there's another one here, if I can find it. Georgie Tate, where are you? Oh, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one that's very really important. Hey, uh, so basically... Well, you know what? It's going to explain itself. Hey, StarCityGames.com. If you're going to delete my author page, then you might as well delete all of my articles. Consider this a request to do so, and my final thanks for hosting all of my work over the years. No hard feelings. I assume you had some problems with something I said on Twitter about Gamergate. Well, guess what? Fuck Gamergate and every worthless piece of shit in it. Yes, the women too. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yes, the minorities too. I'd say the same about women and minorities who joined the KGB or the National the NDA, whatever. I guess, or whatever. The, the, Let's go for that, the NDA. The, I, th I think it was the organization when it, uh, in Germany when the Nazis were there. Uh, so he said, and he adds, I'll be frank with you, there's literally zero chance I ever change even one letter of one syllable of one word or one sentence of one tweet I've made on the subject of feminism affirmative action and or Gamergate so you might as well go ahead and remove me and we'll both go our separate ways with my tanks and I'm making one concession for Gamergate I'll die first literally I have made peace with my existence and I'm prepared to die wow this man is fucked up <laughs> and even Irwin replied to him hey Jordy just FYI SCG has deleted all author pages as we're now using a going to use a tagging system at least the other pa <laughs> oh, wow. At least the author pages I believe you're looking for with bio plus list of links. This this current new system has been in place for a while now. Using a date date range controls, you can find uh, your your previous work. <laughs> so you, yeah, you didn't even fucking think about I'm it. Gonna die. <laughs> Yeah, dude, this... Wow. <laughs> Good to this... see how open-minded anti-GG are. And this is why... No, but I mean, I mean, to be fair, like, even if anti-GG has lots of fucking batshit insane people, he's he's in a separate group. Like, he's even more fucking insane. And there's even... There, there, there's even other pictures I've seen that I'm not gonna necessarily post here because, I mean, I, I don't just... Like, I wanna... It's it, I think it's okay to laugh at what people say, but there, there's things he posted that 
showed that he might be living a really shitty life and that he might be very fucking frustrated. Right. Which, when you when you see it, you kind of understand how he could have become so fucking batshit insane. Right. But I'm not. I'm, but I don't necessarily want to show it because you know I I, yep. I don't necessarily want to laugh at someone's like because I mean if you're not socially intelligent and you're shitty at making friends or you know meeting other kind of people. It, it might grow frustration. It, it just sucks. Like it's bad. Uh, yeah. Of course, if you're gonna say stupid shit because of that, I'm gonna laugh at you. But I'm not gonna laugh at your misery itself because I don't think it's that. I don't think it's great. I support um, 100. percent And so, so understand. Like we're, we're making fun of stupid people, but there's a reason why they're like this. Uh, and it's important. It's important to think about Sometimes. it, and not and not just people <laughs> put people in boxes. No, of course, uh, Georgie Tate. Uh, I'm oh gonna, no, certainly. It's but a... that said, let's ja laugh at one last tweet by Georgie Tate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he says, "If Batman harasses the Joker one thousand times and Joker harasses Batman one time, I'm still backing Batman. One is a hero, one is scum. Simple." Wow, good to see he sees things. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, everything That's is black great. and white, and you know, Batman no, open to no, no, but, but but Batman has this label that said hero, so everything he does is totally okay, you know. Because see, the the thing is, if like let's take the real meaning of harassment. If Batman was harassing the Joker a thousand times and Joker harassed Batman one time, the Joker wouldn't be the jackass here; it would be Batman, <laughs> you know. Wow. Oh man, this guy. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, oh well, anyway. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to... I don't understand what he's trying to say there. Like, even taken as a hyperbole, I don't understand what he's saying. Like, I think basically he's saying... He's, saying, he's like, reinforcing his own statement, I believe, because... If, if the United States... I guess, you know what, this might be getting too political. But, like, if... Well, okay, so the United States were to, like, nuke North Korea, it wouldn't matter because one is the United States and one is North Korea. That's basically what <laughs> Yeah, saying. I guess, you know. Or, or not, like, I don't know, just, like, why? Why? <laughs> hey, why so would here's, you say this on Twitter? <laughs> I know. Uh, anyway, so here's another uh, bunch of tweets uh, that do, uh, where Andrew Sampson, who was on the show a few episodes ago, um, is talking, so let's see, he got some shit, basically. So, Dan Olin tweets, I see this a lot, but please take this seriously. You should honestly consider suicide as a potential life path. Wow. Wait, let's hear him out. Uh, Andrew replies, You seem a bit rustled. Here you go. Wipe up that anal seepage. And then he posts a picture. <laughs> An inside joke I want to mount on my wall. Then Dan Olin says, When you are dead, life will be good. And so, so he's literally, and, and honestly, like, for, for those people who don't know Andrew Sampson, he's literally a guy who used to teach his local feminist group how to code. <laughs> and now he's actually running an Indiegogo campaign to teach people who want to learn how to code and make games and allow them to do so. Um, and it's going very well, and he's even going to have rewards for people who follow the, the courses that he's going to give online, basically to teach people how to code. And he's also supporting Gamergate because he doesn't like corruption and collusion. And doesn't matter, let's, let's give this guy shit because he has Gamergate on his fucking uh, account profile, Twitter picture, whatever. <laughs> and every single time it's just like, oh well, uh, whatever. But uh, do you want to add anything before no. I go on to the no. next? No. His <laughs> beer's just like, fuck this. Well, honestly, you know what I'm thinking back to? I'm thinking back to that thing where the uh, ISIS bot was tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Anytime I feel sad, I just remember that, and it makes me Anti Gamergate hiring uh, the ISIS bot so that it would tweet Anti Gamergate 2014. How's this going, by the way? Oh, it's, it's dead. So here's um, a few comments on a certain video games website you might recognize. Um, so Aaron says, wow, that's creative and new. You have an uh, almost naked female character. Aren't there plenty already? Why don't they do the same with male characters as well? This is freaking stupid. Uh, I wonder, why is it that people are so easily persuaded by using sex to sell a game or character? Why not her intelligence or her skills as a person? It's getting to the point where people don't even question any of this. It's all TNA in media. Neo Repo replies, 
I didn't hear anyone complain about Raiden in, in Metal Gear Solid 2. And he, he wasn't almost nude. He was completely nude, for the record. And then you have Vamp and Solid Snake in Metal Gear Solid 4. Naked Snake in Metal Gear Solid... I think Neo Repo is a Metal Gear Solid fan. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to throw this out there. But then Aaron replies, I'm not familiar with any of those games, so how could I complain about that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's just funny how she worded it. It's like, how could I complain about it? If I, if I knew about it, I would surely complain about it. I love complaining. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, uh, you know, there, there's like, uh, j just thinking about, uh, what's this game with Shulk, the character Shulk from this w Nintendo Wii U game? Uh, uh, fuck, I forget. But basically, at some point, he's in boxers and he's almost naked otherwise. Like, it happens to some male characters. And there's, plenty of video games where you know because see you can't the problem is that with a picture you can see how a person is dressed with a picture you cannot see the character or how well written a character is and there's plenty of female characters who are extremely well developed and are smart and have qualities it's just like you have to play games to to know about them oh to well and again i would even argue like the same thing is, happens with males it's just that our like what I, I don't even want to say women. What individuals find attractive about men isn't just their dicks hanging out. That's not like no. a sexual. It's no. about them being ripped and having like you know. It's 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 their quality. It's it's qualities. Yeah. What do they have to offer? To uh, well, it, but, but even physically, even physically, men are still sexualized. Again, this yeah, is why for, we yeah. don't have like tons of fat, ugly male protagonists. Oh yeah, no, they're... that's that's the nature of the beast, and you can't. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Fat, fat I, ugly, I, disgusting protagonists from games. I can only think of Booger Man, and you know <laughs> that it's all there is, really. And he, he was from the Sega. Lara Croft. Ooh. Sorry, <laughs> what? I can only think of Laura Croft. <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, because she's all she's full of uh, of, gr of grime all the way That's, throughout the game. <laughs> got a dumb looking face to me, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Whatever. So here's the next tweet, and this one is really really gonna it made me lose my shit okay so steve hogarthy on the advice of my lawyer i have now reported gamergate to the police for mocking my tweets have fun in prison <laughs> wow <laughs> the police is gonna be like hey there gamergate that's enough i'm gonna put you in <laughs> gonna put you in jail <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> oh man he's gonna like oh my god like you, you made fun of my tweets, therefore you should go to jail. Can we? Can we? Oh shit, Beard! Now the police is gonna come to our house because we made fun of this guy. Oh man, better fucking close it before the fucking FBI shows up all the way in fucking Canada. I really wanted to read what his lawyer said. Whatever. Oh, you want? I, I'll bring it back up. Well, uh, it's, okay. it's okay, we'll read it after because we should, we should probably get to other stuff. I really want to talk about assassin's creed oh yeah and we will we we probably yeah. will go over time actually this episode so um first oh there's there's another one i'm gonna <laughs> gonna bring up all right whatever he's paying his lawyer it's too much <laughs> <laughs> well you know I, they, they they're not gonna say no all right so holly ween says to uh don't you rt me you know darn good and well that sets me up to be a target I don't even want to hear it. And then Vivian James replies, I don't deserve to be treated that way, certainly not for retweeting stuff I agreed with. So fuck you. Yeah, fuck you too. You put me in danger. <laughs> by, retwe <laughs> by retweeting a tweet you agreed with, you, you, you put me like on the forefront of Gamergate and therefore in danger, you know? <laughs> and Did therefore, I, and I'm going to insult you on the internet because of it. You know what, <laughs> And I apologize, everybody out there. Like, since I've since I finished work, I really have not been doing too much, so I should be doing more research for the podcast. Like, do they this this thing that they thought was like 4chan related murder is that still <laughs> happening? Oh, uh, actually, well, they did find out who the guy was, and I believe he got arrested. Um, he's just a oh. dude. Like, I don't like. And again, it wasn't really related to Gamergate at all, as of course it's not, no, because by the, by the time it, it was posted on 4chan, Gamergate was censored on 4chan, so it's, it was really just Brianna Wu pulling that shit out of her ass. Um, and, oh, we have uh, 
Th this this one has made the rounds on the internet quite a few. It's great. It's by our good old friend Jonathan McIntosh, and only him could muster such stupid bullshit. So he says. San Francisco is full of repugnant white dudes who believe capitalism and their personal technology idea will save the poor brown people. J Jonathan, J I, I, are you aware that you're a man and that you're also white? <laughs> but, because I mean, I mean, and he tweeted it. And is he, he just trying? Because see, technology. <laughs> lots of ah oh, man, lo lots of people have, have talked about this fucking thing of you know male privilege and white privilege, about being the quote unquote the I don't like to say the left because a lot of people in, in the left say that this is bullshit, but the left's version of the original sin, and it feels like Jonathan McIntosh despises himself for being white and being a man, so every time he can, he's gonna just shit on white dudes to try to cleanse himself for, for from this horrible original sin of being a man and a, a terrible person. Like, listen, do... Maybe I'm being an armchair psychologist, I admit, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know what? And we can't, like... It's I don't like... Want to, I don't want to pretend that the past didn't happen, and yes, there is a double standard, so it is more okay for white people to make fun of other white people. I, I accept that. Like, it is a double standard, but I'm okay with it. Um... This is just a weird tweet. <laughs> like, I just don't. I don't. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You, let's let's just move on then. I Fuck it. Personal technology. Why do people tweet this stuff? <laughs> so there's this porn star for people who don't know called Mercedes Carrera who started supporting GamerGate basically out of nowhere, and she's. Um, she tweeted at, of course, Jonathan McIntosh, because she's actually, like, I listen to streams where she talks, and, you know, she's not the stereotype of, like, an idiot, like, because people think porn stars are just stupid. Like, she used to do tons of things, um, like, important jobs. I don't exactly remember, but it's really stuff that you need to be fairly smart to be in. And now she's just like, fuck it, porn is fun. And, you know, she, she's, anyway, she, she's really articulate. And she tweeted, of course, at Jonathan McIntosh. So let's take, let's take a look. I can, um, oops, sorry. Ah, I'm clicking all kinds of wrong things here. All right, right there. So first, Jonathan McIntosh says, No armor, check. High heels, check. No pants, check. Skirt that is not a skirt, check. Ready for Overwatch combat. Which, by the way, is a game we talked about uh, last week, which seems very fun. And, of course, Mercedes Carrera replies, I can totally do battle in heels, a short skirt, and no panties while porno posing. Watch me, I'm doing it right now. Hashtag game game. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> no, she's she's amazing. She's just like <laughs> Um We have Oh, uh here's another one. That's that's really nice. By a guy named Mr. Bibbs, uh on Twitter. So let's um uh, let's bring that right up. Uh, replying to Platinum Paragon, I'm sorry it took a random person on the internet to point out you're a token for a move. I guess he wanted to say movement, but he wrote moment that hates you. <laughs> Jennifer says, I'm a female and Gamergate supporter. Have received nothing but camaraderie from the movement. Mr. Bibbs replies, tokens are praised by their handlers like a puppy uh, bring being given. Again, he says he's bring. saying being, but he's, he wrote bring given a treat. <laughs> Congrats. I'm not praised or treated like a dog. Your inability to be tactful is noted. Mr. Bibbs again replies, Uh-huh. I'm sure they let you out once in a while to take a piddle, too. You're a token. And she replies, I don't know why he keeps capitalizing token, either. I keep thinking he's writing Tolkien, and I don't understand. No, no, a, a token, as in, um, kind of like a, as in, as a black person would be like a right. token black, I guess, just to, basically, the, the, she's, he's saying she, the, she's used as a shield, and the, you know, she yeah. replies, It would serve you a great deal of good to be more self-aware. You're projecting your poor view of women onto a group of anon anons, basically anonymous users. And it, it's really funny that this, that this guy can basically treat a woman who, you know, just used her own intellect to come to a conclusions and assess reality as best as she could, and then he's just, well, you're just a dog because you're supporting the bad guys, right? And he's treating her like total fucking shit. Like a dog, actually, so... Yep, I'm sure that that'll win her over to their side. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, ah, fucking masterful. And, of course, Jordy Tate is not, like, people saw, I assume, Jordy Tate's tweet and were like, 
there's no way I can just let him win and post the most ridiculous fucking tweet, so I'm going to try to beat him. <laughs> this is by Viet Le, or yeah, I assume that's how it's pronounced, and he says, I'm not apologizing for my belief that Gamergate supporters should be skinned alive and have their teeth torn out by their roots. Like, I was <laughs> like, are you... My god, it's like... See, and the thing is, these same people that are probably going to get reported for saying that they want to skin human beings alive are going to be like, fucking GGers, like, I can't believe you're supporting this shit. Like, don't <laughs> say you're going to cut people in half on Twitter, you idiot. Oh my god, and, and then there's even this other one that uh, goes uh, a bit the same way than the other one with that woman. He's saying... Uh, Lightning Action says, Women that support the video games and gamers, not Gamergate, just the video games and gamers, are no different than house niggers during no. slavery. Wow. <laughs> Again, uh, I like how you compared those two different things, you batshit insane person. And uh, I love how she hashtag Gamergate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gamergate just hashtag like... girl thing, hashtag made in America. Wow. I don't know why she hashtag those things, but I guess <laughs> <laughs> maybe wow. there's a link. Why do people like? And here's another one from. Uh, except if you want to just freak out for two more seconds, which no, is understandable. No. It's understandable no, because please, that's how. Sure. That's what I did when I saw it the first time. But um, basically, this one's from a video game developer uh, from a company called Wolfire, who's making a great game called, um, fucking Overgrowth, which is basically a combat that seems very in interesting and intriguing, but. Then here's this comment. So Gamergate Pros, which is an account made for Gamergate, posted, You realized I will outlogic you, and you're backing down from my irrefutable points. Explain this picture. So basically it's pictures of my people, women, with the hashtag not your shield, supporting Gamergate. And David Rosen, which is a shame because I really liked his game and his game design skills. Now he says... Photoshop and or ignorance. Do they realize Gamergate creator Adam Baldwin posts links like this and then, I don't know, it's some random stupid bullshit by Adam, Adam Baldwin. And see, the thing is, Adam Baldwin kind of coined the term, but it doesn't mean he's representative of Gamergate at all. And to say that people in this picture are either photoshopped or don't, are too fucking stupid or don't know what they're talking about is kind of, it's, it's extremely fucking dismissive. And unfortunately, well, that's, that's the whole reason Not Your Shield was created. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's like people are dismissing my opinion. I'm going to create a Not Your Shield. Time to dismiss Not Your Shield. <laughs> it's like, like, I don't. We can wow. only do so much with a hashtag. No, but but you know what? What you said is completely correct, though. It's unfortunate because, and and it is a very interesting discussion to have, like because these people creating overgrowth, like it looks like a game that would be fun and doesn't, you know. That the story has nothing to do with feminism or no, no, nothing to do. It's actually just uh, but but do you really purchase cool. it knowing that it's supporting these people who I, I purchased it a long time ago when it was because oh. it's in alpha. <laughs> it's in alpha, but then I I think I lost my CD key or something, <laughs> and this is why I use Steam, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm an idiot. But it's uh, <laughs> and, and you know what? Like I think I've spoken my opinion on this before. It was ten bucks I, though. So. I would like to reiterate that. I do think it's a discussion worth having. I don't think it's like a... Uh, yeah. I, I do think it comes down to an opinion thing. Personally, I wouldn't. Like, the more I'm seeing these people who... Again, if if you're in support of not telling people what's actually going on in games journalism, obviously I don't want to buy your game. Because, like, do you want to go this fucking route of having to second guess everything you see like going to E3 is just a waste of time now because you realize everything they show you is bullshit even like, the videos yeah, yeah it's they report on yep all the gameplay trailer all of it's, it bullshit even gameplay trailers yeah it's made to yep. to look as if it's real but then it's bold and all this is why lies. this is why again we need Gamergate and journalism it's because Yep. If we reform this, and you know, people criticize Gamergate, saying like, "Oh, you're not going after AAA developers." Well, no, because, uh, or you know, you're just going after indies. Well, no, that's the thing, Wait, because, yeah, they said that you're not going after AAA developers who do things, and uh, about Gamergate in general, and just going out after indie developers. And the thing is, if we fix video games journalists, and they become again this force that is supposed to protect the the user, then you know they're 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 doing their job their job as a watchdog properly 
and it will they will both stop colluding with the Indies and also calling AAA uh, places when they try to pull stupid shit like this, like fake trailers. See, th that's the thing. When people post a fake trailer for a game and the released game is not the same, I should see on video game websites articles yeah. talking about how the differences and how it was fucking bullshit and trying to make these the people that do this accountable because you you're lying literally to your user base because and maybe sometimes like they're just trying they're like they're saying oh like this is not exactly the finished product but we want to improve the demo or make it look better just because we plan to make it look like that and then it doesn't quite look like that well sh tough shit it's just it's still a lie you know and it's and now because some people started doing it and improved their sales everybody has to do it because they have to compete and that's why this environment should not be allowed to exist. Again, and just these ridiculous marketing schemes, and we saw it with ESO, like, we, we saw it with a lot of this shit, where they just, they can tell that the game is shit. Like, don't tell me that the publishers don't know. They can tell, <laughs> they know that the deadline's coming up, and so they're like, oh, let's put a and sometimes, on. Sometimes and sometimes they rush games. Our game until everyone's already pre-ordered it. Like, this pre-ordering thing. Yeah, this pre-order culture. It's, it's totally against the user. And, you know, uh, having even the this Assassin's Creed game that we're going to talk uh, about soon they don't uh, you know they they, they, they make uh, the get the websites not be able to you know in exchange for the pre the, the review copy you can't release a review before the game is released so that all nobody cancels their pre-orders it's fucking bullshit now so and with that said again I do think that the way that we're going to basically undermine this bullshit is by being more intelligent consumers oh yeah totally there's everybody else now with that said that doesn't mean that GG should stop like the reason that it should continue is because journalists should be on our side and they're not yeah like, as it stands, they are on their own side. They're on the publisher's side. They don't care about the consumer because it's just like the uh, theaters now, and to a regard. And this is, this is a field I know almost nothing about, so I'm going to apologize in advance if I say something way off base. But, uh, like, as soon as your ass is in the seat or as soon as you purchase the game, they don't care what the quality is anymore because you can't return it. Like, there is nothing you can do. You've already purchased the game, and if it's shit, well, too bad. So you either have to do what I do, which is wait, like, a <laughs> long time. Like, I usually, yeah. unless I know, unless I trust the publisher, I will never, ever pre-order something. I will never, ever, like, or, just purchase something on a whim. I guess, I guess if it's a game like Call of Duty, it's okay to pre-order because you already know it's the same game that you oh, already yeah. have. Or again, and I so you can buy it because <laughs> you already Isaac played Rebirth. it. <laughs> like I knew Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Like I watched Northern Lion, who like had talked to Edmund McMillan about it. Like you watch interviews where the actual person is talking. I had yeah. already played the first game, so I knew sort of the rough quality. Yeah. If I had purchased Binding of Isaac Rebirth and it was like a fucking first-person shooter, <laughs> I would be furious and never purchase anything from Edmund McMillan ever again. Unfortunately, that is where we're at well, with purchasing right now. That, I don't shouldn't, know. that shouldn't happen because well, and if, so if they lied about it, but I mean, if if they if they yeah, made a a side game, could, that would be cool. <laughs> Think, think about the uh, E3 thing where they were talking about Legend of Zelda. Now, it hasn't been released yet, so we don't know if it's a lie, but remember when uh, this trailer. I think it was Miyamoto came out and he was like, it's an open world game, and then a little while later he's like, I guess open world wasn't quite, and maybe it's Oh yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I bet you We don't knew. mean open world, we mean open world. <laughs> exactly, right. But you know what? That's more intelligent, because if it was fucking EA or Ubisoft, they would have just let that shit go. They yeah. Like, that's yeah, very true. And then when it came out, they would have been like, "Well, you know, there's an overworld. You can go wherever you want in the overworld." Like, and even even anything. even when it comes to sorry, Dark Souls two, like it's yep. the the main example I'm gonna think about. They talked about like the lighting and the torch and how important it was, and then the game's released and <laughs> no lighting, even yep. close as w what we've seen. And it's yep. anyways, it's my so. Except if you want to go on, so, beard. No, so so basically, uh, like my last statement is just that that's why the GG thing is important to me, because journalists should protect us from having to learn that way. They should come out and say these publishers can be trusted for what they've done so far, and these ones cannot. Like they should be able to come out and say 
before people have to purchase Assassin's Creed Unity and have this list of fucking problems and yeah. say, it's not ready yet, don't buy it, so that we don't. And then we know that the journalists on our side and we're more apt to look at their articles and listen and then, to their opinion. And then publishers and developers know that if they do stupid shit like no, that, <laughs> they're going to get called out on it and sell but less. And therefore, the, the thing that will bring them the most profits will be release a game like wait and release a good quality game and that's that that's i think what is important yep, it's perfect base your bonuses on fucking metacritic oh my god <laughs> yeah uh, so uh i think it's the perfect place to try to switch to yeah. video game news by the way i'd like to remind everyone if you want us to comment uh on your if you want to comment on the show as it goes you can tweet at us at uh, ha uh at matt playing video or L zero beard. Um, all right, so now video game news. Video game news. So the first one I have is uh, Beard's a big fan of uh, Jim Sterling in the Jimquisition. I don't know if I'm overplaying it, but yeah, you, you like yeah. it. And, yeah. and recently hey, he yeah. he left the Escapist, um, and he plans to get funded through uh, I guess Patreon, uh, which is a website that allows uh, people to create content and users on the internet to pay them either by month or by thing that they produce, like it can be a, a YouTube video, so they could get paid by, by video. Um, and the, the thing that's really important, like, and, and supposedly, like, I'm not exactly sure on why he left. I've heard that he got upset because he wasn't consulted on a certain article that was written for the escapist that allowed Gamergate people basically to, basically to, to, to have their side of the opinion presented. Um, and, and he left, but what's really important, and it's, it's kind of a question that was uh, brought up by a user by the name of Mundane Matt in one of his, his videos, is what does it mean for the future of gaming journalism? Because he left a website, he left this environment where, I mean, The Escapist was very fair when it came to his, its portrayal of, um, of Gamergate, but now well, he's, he's going to be... letting people have an open discussion. Yeah, there. he's going to be, he's going to be able to have his own opinions and it's not going to be corporate like even when it comes to games or things that are not gamergate if he succeeds if it's successful you might see other gaming journalists kind of do the same sort of like make videos and kind of like because if they can get paid and live of course i guess if you're not jim or well known you're not going to be able to do it as well but you know like it could be well, if if that is the reason that he left, I think what he's going to learn again, and I bet you that like the best advocate for this would be Total Biscuit. The reason that businesses are apt to get rid of people that say something that they don't necessarily agree with is because they're losing money. That's not from a greed standpoint. That's from a protecting one another standpoint. If Jim released a video that people didn't like and nobody watched it, Jim would still be protected by the escapist. If he goes out on his own and says that he supports Gamersgate, and I'm not saying that this is his view, but... No, he doesn't, actually, I, I think. I support Gamersgate and also... He, I, well, just, just for the been, sake of argument. Okay, yeah, yeah. That he came out and he said, I support Gamersgate and... Like, again, I'm not saying this is his standpoint, so nobody quote me out of context. And he says that, like, I hate women and all of these other people, and he gets no money for it, he won't be protected anymore. So it is harder going alone. He'll have more freedom of speech, but then you'll, he'll understand why people might be more cautious about taking one standpoint over another, because he'd rather have more people watching his videos so that he can actually, like, survive. It's interesting. Speaking of Total Biscuit, he did comment on uh, Jim leaving, and he says, of course, you have to read from bottom to top. He says, Jim Sterling has left The Escapist and is now crowdfunding Jimquisition. Jim remains as a colleague on Polaris for his other stuff before you shout, sickening nepotism, or something. Patreon is good when it is used to fund a regular, reliable product. Not so keen on its use for crowdfunded welfare. <laughs> when, uh, when it's used for something that's easily quantifiable, it's great. Uh, Ali Mo League, for instance, great tournament. Ultimately, though, people can give money to wh whatever and whomever they please, so hey, non-issue. Some people have yet to figure out that when they insult me on Twitter, they're insulting my PR guy, the only one reading it. All right, so I guess that last tweet was not as related. But um, even even later on, like if, if lots of people do that, like leave and go on Patreon to make videos like 
At some point, you're going to hit this point where users just can't support anybody anymore, and they're going to have to choose on the best ones. So yeah, I, I can't wait to to see. Like, I don't know if it's going to be become a movement and what's going to happen with that, but that's definitely very interesting. Um, and of course, I guess it sucks for you, Beard, because now you can't. It's one less reason to go to the escapist, I guess, for you yeah. at least. <laughs> yeah. Now and again, I mean, if it well, and and with that said, like uh, I don't. It, it's like the the movie Bob or even the zero punctuation thing. Like there's there's very few people I agree with 100. Um, percent Jim, I do like uh, a lot of his articles. I I agree with his standpoint on some stuff. Um, if he leaves the escapist for this reason, no, that's good. Like because again, it will reveal potentially more shit that's going on in gaming journalism. Fair enough. All right, so. Assassin's Creed, you wanted to talk about it for a long time. So basically for people who don't know, Assassin's Creed Unity was released recently, perhaps a bit early. And, you know, again, like we said, people um, who received uh, copies to review it were not allowed. It was an embargo. They couldn't release any reviews before the game was actually out. And it happens that it's really poorly optimized, that when you enter the co-op it becomes super fucking laggy, and it crashes often. Beard... Go. <laughs> well, so yeah, so that's basically it. But um, no, I, I, I mean, it wasn't like that. I just think it's funny because it's turning into everyone knows how much I love referencing uh, Watch Dogs and how it was all bullshit, and now it's basically that again. But at least, see, the thing, the thing with Watch Dogs is at least they, they, uh, there was a review. Uh, I mean, a release planned, and they pushed it back, and they made a game. That was, you know, I guess, you know, it was, call it as you want, but at least it wasn't crashing and buggy, and it sold lots of copies. Now, Ubisoft, they shot, them, they shot themselves in the foot because they're going to release this new game, Far Cry 4, recently, and it's, you know, it's going to release really soon. Is it going to be as poorly optimized and shit? I don't know. I wouldn't buy it, though, just because it might be. Because they released, like, sure, like, they're going to trick people, and people are going to buy Assassin's Creed Unity thinking it's a good fucking game, but then, oh, it's shit, and, oh, but we're going to patch it later, sort of. Um, and again, this brings me to the fucking it, scores again, because Metacritic gives it a 4 out of 5 when it has all of these goddamn bugs. <laughs> and to me, if something was released like that, well, okay, so first of all, I do think... <laughs> To, to reiterate what I said last week, just in case there's anyone who doesn't know, like, I will defend hand and fist, I, I reserve the right to change my opinion, but that the number scoring thing is fucking bullshit for a lot of reasons. Yep. And this is one of them that really pisses me off. If a game is released, that literally I'm looking at right now, a giant fucking page that just says all of the issues, this is on the uh, Ubisoft forum, by the way, of all of the issues in Assassin's Creed Unity with big red working on it, and orange work around below. Like, this looks fucking something that I would see on, like, a Skyrim Nexus. This doesn't look like somebody shit <laughs> we don't have working in this fucking game we just released. Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. And it's more ridiculous that they would give it such a decent score. Like, now, okay, full disclosure, obviously, I haven't played this game. Who knows? Uh, we have talked about where, if games are shitty because of like graphical issues or whatever, it can be acceptable. And if you like a game, then it doesn't, you know. So speaking from but like I, a larger I, scheme of things, I'm not saying this game is I believe, shitty just because. But it I has believe a I believe the problem is that it's so poorly optimized that it becomes unplayable, and that's really what the problem is here. Oh, just I don't know. Especially it's... like the because because I mean one of the big selling selling points of this game was the co-op. You know that's why it's called Unity. It's because and that's, and you know, that's also why I guess they, they they got shit because the you know it's for assassin guys just you know doing stuff together like co-op games. And when you do the co-op in this game, it becomes a buggy fucking mess or it crashes. <laughs> so it's just like, it's great. Like, why can't you delay the game just a little bit to fucking iron out these issues? I mean, it's not we're not that close to Christmas. Like, there's still like more than a month. And maybe. I mean, there must be. There must be just like parts of this industry that it's, it's, I don't. I don't have the strongest grasp on. I should watch more. 
extra credits, like the thing that talks about gaming behind. I used to watch it all the time. It's it's pretty good for talking about what happens behind they, they, the scenes of video game creation. But no, uh, did, didn't they come against Gamergate recently though? <laughs> oh, did they? Oh, yeah. They said they hate. Well, yeah, I even um, they said they were. It, it's it's great. Well, to be fair, I think they were just misinformed because they said. They said a number of things, and then they said, "And this is why we are against Gamergate." And I just tweeted at them, uh, "Well, that's that's all the things you named in that tweet were things that Gamergate is for." So I don't exactly know what the fuck you're saying, but uh, <laughs> oh, is it gonna turn into this thing like all these actors and stuff who are also like, "Stop hating women," and it's like that's not what this is about. <laughs> Man, I hope not. I don't know. The machine of bullshit is is strong, but. Um... And uh, I don't know, like, uh, I think some of the stuff, like, uh, for them, their oh, video, for yeah, me, the, their true. videos are hit and miss. Some of them, I'm like, this is sort of interesting what you're talking about. The other thing, it's like, you're just blowing some air and trying to sound smart, you know? So, I don't know. But whatever. Let's, um, let's stop talking about them and talk about oh, more God. video news. Okay, so, sorry, if I can just talk about this extra cool. credits thing really, really quickly. So, I did find their quote. I think we've talked about this before. But, uh, just, just, yeah. uh take part of the thing out uh the immeasurable pain this has caused to people and the immense distance it has set back the industry crosses an irredeemable line social media is not ideal to explore the details of this issue that have arisen in the last few months but let's make our position clear we stand with the creators who pushed this medium to new heights we stand for an open and diverse discord we stand against gamergate i uh, can i wish i wish we could just open up that thing where anti ggers said that they would like to uh flay all of our skin off and pull our teeth out um, having <laughs> well, it's not... fucking Bill Fish saying, you know, that we're all neckbeards that wipe our noses on fucking jizz soaked rags. Like, are it's you... it's funny because he has the biggest neckbeard of uh, the, <laughs> a bigger neckbeard than anybody else I've ever seen. But you know, I keep just, going. <laughs> it's so unfortunate. And that's what that's again, not on Colbert too. Colbert's like, oh, but what about all these people questioning about video game ethics? And Anita's just like, nope, nope, like that's not happening. It's just, <laughs> that's not... And it's like. No, no, it isn't. It's like I'm just gonna push that under the rug. Whoop! No, or maybe nobody. You know what? And and that's the thing. There's so many people saying it. I want to give them the benefit of being like, you know what? There probably, there may be a huge wing of gamers, gay people that are just like hating women. And well, maybe we should just come up with a new like title for it. Because again, this was the this well, was the conflict of conscience I, I would think. When I talk yeah, to but you. but I would I would disagree with that. I used to think maybe it might be a good idea, but see the thing they say about Gamergate and how and why we should change the tag. They say the root of Gamergate is misogyny. Therefore, like or there's it, it has a bad connotation. Therefore, it should be under a new name. And then when you find a new name, what are they going to say? Well, the root of the new name is Gamergate, which is misogyny. Therefore, it's still misogyny. <laughs> so it's not. I don't think it's going to like. There's going to shit on the new name, whatever happens, because. I guess it's and just, it's and it's but, it's and it's to be on. It, there's got to be people out there that are humanitarians that call themselves feminists because you know for and, like and women. we we do have on the Gamergate side women who call themselves feminists. They're just like you know sex positive feminists. Yeah, like who I actually care, care. like yeah. the, the the kind that's not batshit insane, and they're on, they they uh, most of them yeah they agree or you know if they disagree sometimes they might be misinformed but. It's it's nothing. Right, but I guess that's the problem with titles, regardless, right? Like no yeah. matter what sort of medium it's in, it's just it it clumps you together and it doesn't take into consideration that you yeah. might not share. All right. So going back on video game news, uh, well, it it appears that Assassin's Creed was not the only game that was released recently. That's a total fucking pile of crap. The game <laughs> Sonic Boom, of course, <laughs> released today, that's and Sonic. it is. Shit. Yeah, no, 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 but but okay, no, I have to give a uh, backstory for that because Sonic Boom was made by a team from Naughty Dog. It was promoted by Nintendo. Nintendo paid for the game to be an exclusive, and from the trailers, it looked like they tried to reinvent Sonic. It looked very good. It looked very interesting, and now it's released, and it is worse than Sonic 06. And I, sh I shit you not. <laughs> <laughs> I shit you fuck it is worse than Sonic 06 you go through walls the characters are annoying they say stupid shit every every single time they take a ring it's like oh yeah more rings woo <laughs> and and they say it different and it's it is and it's 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 crazy because even back then Sonic 06 was such a buggy unfinished alpha mess 
<laughs> you're like, it's it's already mind blowing. You did it once, but now they fucking did it again. <laughs> like, and you know they pushed it early so that people would would buy it for Christmas for their kids. And that's what, like, okay, I'm gonna show you two pictures. Okay, it's from Sonic Boom. Okay, so the first one is from a promotional picture screenshot. I, I can't wait. <laughs> this is it. So this is what the game looked like. It looks great, right? But this area is not in the final game. Not at all, actually. Here's what it looks like in game. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it, I think it speaks for itself. Okay. So to to quote a, a known internet meme, how do you go from this to this? <laughs> I think Beard's reaction is just fucking perfect, and it's oh my goodness. And people people the, have the been makes it is wow look the farmland. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. and, it, and this was really in game at some point. The thing is that people <laughs> think because people because Sonic fans um, have been because they have been expecting this, and they you know that they're you know they're the kind of people who when shit goes south they'll investigate. And they, oh. they, they're trying to find out how the fuck do you go from this to this. <laughs> and they found out... The, the, the big theory is that they had to have rebuilt the game from the ground up at some point. Like, so, some, some people from the company were fired or left at some point, and some shitstorm happened, because to get Sonic 06 twice in a row, like, oh my god, it's crazy. And I have... I have a third picture. It's a post that has been posted, I believe... I don't know if it's 4chan or 8chan. It's a story about Sonic Boom. And I just want to read it. I think it's important. All right. Let me give you a write-up. I honestly only played an hour, and here's how it went. I work with disabled children for a living. And for the last week, I've been driving one of my clients, we'll call him Pat, to GameStop to pre-order this game. He's a functioning autistic, but not very high. He can communicate, but he doesn't know how to read or communicate correctly at times. He doesn't understand his feelings. That might sound trivial, but read on. We finally finished paying for the game, and the entire week, I was trying to warn him, Pat, don't do this. Pat, you can spend that money on way better things, but he won't listen. We finally get home and throw it in his Wii U, and he asked me to play with him because he cannot get very far in games on his own. Right from the start, he somehow magically just manages to find every single glitch he, could, he possibly could. He fell through the floor on the first three loops five times. He got stuck on a ring, and we had to reset the system. And sometimes he would just pass right through enemies like they weren't even there. Finally, after he started getting a little upset, I turned it off. And I had told him... Uh, I, I, I turned it off and I had him told hold his cat to, cal to calm down. Sorry, He looked down at his cat and back up at me. And he said in a completely clear voice, Anon, that was the worst thing I've ever bought. This was the longest sentence I've ever heard him say, without lisp, without grunting, without hand motions. He knew exactly what he wanted to say and how to say it. Because Sonic Boom was that fucking bad. Sonic Boom was so bad, it obliterated autism for 10 seconds. <laughs> and I think... I think it just illustrates... No, no, it's crazy. It's, it's worse than Sonic 06 twice in a row, this fucking game. Wow. And see, I, I've, I've been, you know, I, for people who watched the early episodes of the podcast, Sonic 2 was my first game as a kid. I stopped playing Sonic games when they became 3D, and, you know, at first I was kind of sad, but now I'm like, thank God, because they were all shit. Um, well, most of them. Uh, but, um, and, and I've stopped caring about Sonic ever, but, you know, with this, I was like, you know, there was a small glint of hope. I'm like, hey, probably it's going to be decent. I might not buy it because I don't really care about Sonic. And, like, Sonic Generations was really good, so, you know, it showed a bit of promise. But now that they, they made Sonic 06 twice in a row, I, I'm so, I, don't, I don't think I even have the strength to care about any Sonic game in the future. It's mind-blowing. It's fucking... It's... And, and just, you know, if you want... I think Beard's reaction was fucking perfect. <laughs> oh, and, and, I mean, for clarification, like, I'm not the biggest Sonic fan. I did yeah. play it on Sega Genesis, like, and thought it was great. 
Um, but it, it just never hooked me the same way that... But then again, I'm not... I mean, Nintendo, for some reason, for me, just never really sunk in. Like, I don't have the same sort of uh, adoration, I guess. Like, as games got better, I just kind Except of... for Madras Mask, right? That's true. Legend of Zelda. Yeah, it's Legend speaking, of Zelda. Speaking of Madras Mask... Oh, I know. Perfect segue. About. There's yeah. been new details that have been revealed about the game. So basically, uh, they've added the, 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 the basically uh, it's going to be changed a little bit. So one boss battle we learned is going to get changed from the original game, but no one knows which one yet. Um, the gyro controls from Ocarina of Time 3D are going to be back. Uh, there's a second fishing spot that's going to be added to the game to, I guess, allow you to fish more if you happen to enjoy it. And uh, yeah, there's going to be other few changes. They're going to add a few things, so we don't know exactly what yet, but it seems, you know, I think Nintendo knows what they're doing when it comes to changing things, so it should be hopefully all improvements. Personally, again, as someone that loves Majora's Mask, um, reading that they were going to be changing stuff made me really want to buy it, because I think that, honestly, changing it, improving on it, because they're, like, the few weaknesses that Majora's Mask has, if they were to improve upon them, and I would say that the bosses are one. The bosses are definitely one of the weakest points, um, yeah, and see, this article just uh, from Tech Raptor just says one is changed, but I heard from other places that bosses were going to be changed. You know, not giving any more details. So yeah, uh, the bosses yeah, could be changed. I I would love to comment on them, but I don't want to spoil it for you. I, I yeah. I hope they change the last boss because he's a little too easy. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, compared to fucking Ganondorf from Ocarina of Time, like holy shit, yeah. who will ever oh. forget that? <laughs> I, yeah, I know, it's, oh man, it was cool. Well, you know, now that I replayed it, I could defeat him fairly easily, but it's well, because I'm not a 10-year-old. <laughs> well, and I guess regardless, they make it pretty intense, whereas... Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, it is an intense fight. Majora, Majora, it's like really intense lead-up, like really crazy, and then you the bosses, you're like, nah. wow, this, well, he, you know, other than his first stage, it's not particularly difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So Dota 2 news. So basically, there's a new hero that has been announced for Dota 2. It is Oracle, and me and B are big Dota fans, so we're very yeah. happy. Uh, there's a comic that they've released on their blog. It looks again very cool. It features also Phantom Assassin, and I like the design of the new hero. And they also talked about the spells that he has. So let's talk a little bit about that because Dota is amazing. So the first one is Fortune's End. So basically. It's, it's basically just a nuke spell that allows Oracle to shoot, uh, to charge basically an energy bolt, it does damage, and it also, you know, purge uh, buffs uh, in an area, depending on how long you charge it, so that's cool. Second one is a bit more interesting, it's called Fate's Edict, it allows the hero to, as it's described, enrapture the target, rendering them unable to attack, granting them 100% spell resistance and increasing the damage they take from other damage types. So it can be cast on both allies and enemies. So, so it, it's, it's like a uh, fucking ethereal blade. Sort, yeah. A spell, sort of. Sort of. Sort of, but not quite. Because Pugna has a spell like that, but basically, it's. I think it's the opposite, actually. Like, they, they will be resistant to spell damage, but they take more physical damage, basically. Mm. So it's magic. So it's like a BKB you can cast on anybody, but uh, I think the well, way the way it's described here. Let let me check. Actually, fuck it. I'm gonna go on the Dota two block. Oh yeah, yeah. But th this is like re reverse BKB then. Yeah. So it's like it's again. It's like the fucking ghost scepter or whatever. Like it. You can't attack, but it makes you vulnerable to... Yeah, but, but see, the, the thing is... So, yeah, you, you get... Uh, actually, you can't be hit by spells. It's just that they will, need, they will do no damage. So it's different from on the night spell. Oh. So you can be stunned, but you won't take any damage. But then you will take more physical damage. So what you could do is potentially oh. cast it on an enemy. Let's say your carry is attacking it, so it will die faster. Right. So huh. it, again, it's really it's a really strategic spell uh, that can be used in very different situations, and of course, because of that, many people who are not that good with the game will fuck it for other people. <laughs> um, there's uh, again the third spell is purifying flames. It uh, the description says it burns away impurities from the target, dealing heavy damage and causing them to regenerate life each second over the duration. So what it does for people who don't understand is if it's a nuke that does damage, but then it regenerates HP. 
the HP that is regenerated is more than the damage you dealt at the beginning. So it's a spell that could, and again, it can be cast on both allies and enemies. So what you can do is use it on an enemy that's very low HP and make sure, of course, that, you know, he's going to get killed by the blast. Or you can cast it on your uh, one of your allies that is low HP, but that's not going to die from or not get into trouble too fast. And then you can use it to sort of heal him from the from the damage from damage he has taken. So that's kind of that's kind of interesting in that way. Yeah. And his ultimate false promise allows him to temporarily alter the target ally's destiny, as the description the fluff description says, delaying all damage, healing, and regeneration effects on them until the spell ends. The ally is granted invisibility while attacking and moving and it removes all negative status effects while applied. Hmm. So... So it's like Death Ward, but to more shit. No, no, it's basically yeah. like, you can't... The, 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 like, any damage or healing you would take is gonna be delayed, so your HP bar is gonna stay where the fuck it is, and you're invisible and you can attack people <laughs> for the duration. Until it's done. So I assume, yeah, so basically, and uh, it does... Whoa, it lasts 7, 8, and 9 seconds. Uh, 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 at all three levels. Uh, well, you know, as it levels up. Right. So it's kind of... Mm. So all damage and healing ha happen immediately once the buff ends. The, this damage is lethal and is credited to the original damage sources. Um, ca casting or, uh, abilities or attacking will not break the invisibility. The delayed healing is doubled when it is provided at the end of the duration. Up, so basically, if you heal people and they don't die, they get healed even more. Applies a strong dispel on the on the target when it's cast. So I don't know exactly what strong dispel is, but I think, oh, whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to get too much Technical, into Dota yeah. mechanics uh, because we still have a few news to to talk about before this whole thing ends. All right. So, uh, but yeah, you see, he does seem like when I saw it, like some of the things you're like, wow, in certain situations it's very OP, but he's a very situational support. So again, it's going to be very cool. And of course, it's also hinted at that Phantom Assassin, the other hero that's in the comic, will receive um, an Arcana, probably. Uh, and I don't know actually if they updated the the page because it, they, they only had the day one last time I checked, but maybe now they updated it. I just can't check right now because I'm doing a podcast. Anyways, <laughs> so um, first let's go with a quick little news uh, that's of course related to gaming. It might be even the most important news we're going to talk about for all the podcasts we ever talked about. And it, it's titled Dorito Flavored Mountain Dew is Real, PepsiCo Confirms. Well, you know, uh, we talked earlier about people sending uh, fucking rovers to comets, and I don't think, <laughs> I don't think it's as important as finally we get Mountain Dew that tastes just like Doritos. Oh no, you know what? Like as I said before, you're free to <laughs> people that land rovers on meteorites. Like you have a right to do that. Anyone comets. who makes fun of Doritos flavored Mountain Dew is gonna get ganged. By every every GG -er, I'm gonna send all. Of them. <laughs> yeah. And, but but being serious, uh, I'm kind of puzzled because <laughs> because oh oh of course beard you're serious, <laughs> what I'm saying we're, we're not being yeah we're totally serious uh, but no but to, to be fair like I'm puzzled because you know when it comes to snacks especially like the Dorito Mountain Dew Xbox Super Cool <laughs> snacks. I think the point of Mountain Dew is to gush down the flavor of Doritos so then you can eat more Doritos and the fact that it's a different taste kind of complements it. So if you eat Doritos, it tastes like Doritos and you drink Mountain Dew and it still tastes like Doritos, it's going to be weird. Like, I mean, Mountain Dew is a complement to Doritos. It can't be if it tastes like Doritos. <laughs> and maybe people are going to be like, Matt, you're, you're thinking too much into that shit. No, no you aren't. You aren't. It's a <laughs> No, listen, it's a beverage. <laughs> I have to think about this sort of thing. Like, changing, changing the color of ketchup. It doesn't sound like a big deal when you think about it, but look at what happened when they changed ketchup to purple and green. Everyone was like, this is disgusting, we don't want this. Like, well, yeah. Doritos-flavored Mountain Dew sounds disgusting. <laughs> Beer, this is blasphemy. I'm sure it's going to be... No, I'm not drinking it. It's going to be an orgasm for your mouth. Uh, oh. But <laughs> okay, no, no, but, uh, moving on, moving on. Um, and this is this is the last thing 
I have planned for this week. It is about a game oh, that please, recently. Please just show the Sonic <laughs> picture again. You want... still... Okay. No, 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 no. Sorry, I was joking. I just, as you were talking, I keep thinking back to the. Wow, look at the farmlands. Okay, no, no. Uh... Okay, so okay, so just before the last thing, then we're gonna bring back up <laughs> Sonic Boom just for beards. So we have. Sonic running into what looks a very fucking great area, like the angle, everything, and then, <laughs> wow! <laughs> look at the farmland. And it doesn't even look like a fucking farm. It just looks great, like a jungle. Oh, and it, it's it's green, it's pretty, and this is some yellow. Oh my god, it makes me want to puke. But yeah, let's go. Let's go. Back. Oh, let's god. go back to uh, basically Valkyria Chronicles. All right. So I'm just gonna read the basically the picture, the article. So, six-year-old uh, JRPG beats Assassin's Creed Unity in Steam charts. The PC port of Valkyria Chronicles claimed the top spot on Steam Downloads chart following its November 11th release. When v Valkyria Chronicles first launched in 2008 on the PlayStation 3, it wasn't what you'd call a huge hit. Despite glowing reviews and a PS3 library that was still somewhat lackluster, its first month in North America, for instance, saw only... Uh, sell 33,000 units. These sales would later improve after a substantial price drop, but the gamer, uh, the game never wound up being that tremendous a success outside of Japan. Six years and a new port later, however, it would seem the game's fortune has changed. As announced earlier this month, the new port of Valkyria Chronicle landed on Steam this Monday, and arguably against the odds, it became an instant hit amongst the customers, beating out other highly anticipated games like Assassin's Creed Unity. Well, you know, for once, it, it's not a buggy mess, but maybe people didn't know that anyways. For the for the position of top, top download that day, Sega, understandably, and they're probably very happy about it because their fucking Sonic game sucks, but <laughs> has been happy with the reception of the game's re-release. We would like to take this opportunity uh, to thank all the fans for their support in the phenomenal success of this launch, said John Clark, Sega Europe's Senior Vice President of Commercial Publishing. We're also delighted at the response from the Steam community, which indicates that newcomers to the series are finding it as enchanting as engaging as those who have played it before. For those not in the know, Valkyria Chronicle is a Japanese strategy RPG that follows the effort of the nation of Gallia as it tries to repulse an invasion from the imperial imperialistic empire who are totally not Nazi Nazis, by the way. <laughs> Um, the game earned praise for its engaging combat, interesting story, perhaps above all else, its gorgeous visuals, which were specifically designed to, uh, like if they were pencil drawn. It would receive two sequels on the PSP, only the first of which would make it on American shores. So, of course, when people saw it, they reacted with, like, PC Master Race, they have good taste, fuck yes. And I've never, I'll be honest, I've never played this game when it came out, mostly because I don't own a PS3. Uh, but I've seen people, especially on 4chan V back then, talk about it all the fucking time. Like, they really, really fucking liked it. Now that it's on PC, that it's sold a lot, that people like it, um, might be thinking about it. I'm like, maybe, maybe it's worth it. I don't know. <clears throat> at least, at least it's not a buggy mess like the two other games we talked about. But, uh, yeah, so that's good. That's great. Uh, and, and I hope... I, I bet you it does for, like, because... Not not to turn this into a console peasants thing again, but, <laughs> but I do think it is important to consider what console you're releasing. Yeah, and to and to be fair, yeah, and to be fair, we don't necessarily hate console peasants. <gasps> no, okay, <laughs> but, no, no, but I, I just we, we make fun of them. But all all facetiousness aside, it's not harassment. Um, <laughs> it's not. A, it's it's you honestly do like when you think of the Wii. What are you but, thinking of? Like you're not looking at your hardcore yeah. horror games because it's a fucking Wii U. Well, like, to be fair, I mean you could do some cool shit with the Wii U controller. But yeah, no, I know what you mean. I mean and so and, and see, what I hope is that in the future, publishers, especially Sega, but uh, other people who make games for consoles, when they see what happened with Valkyria Chronicles, will think about mm, PC ports or even making PC games. That sound like a good idea. Yep. So I hope they will look at it under a new, a new light and finally understand, you know, that PC... Because uh, I think it's over now, because before, the like, PC had this fucking image, I guess, of, like, oh, it's just pirates and people who pirate things. So yeah. and it's kind of done now, and I think and I the success of Valkyria Chronicle proves otherwise, because it sold more than what it sold in the PS3. 
I still hear people, and I'm, I really don't know why, saying that the PC gamer is dying. I don't get it. Really? Still? <laughs> yeah, still. <laughs> and, I, uh, like, well, if it is, it's because fucking consoles are holding us back, and we can't have good 60 FPS games, you know? <laughs> same people that are writing Skyrim, a hidden gem. <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe, yeah, maybe it's that. Maybe they, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Just hallucinating. Maybe it's by people who hate games, and when they're invited to judge games at a conference, you know, at a festival that judges games, they're just gonna be like, "Well, you know what? Any game with a man in it, I'm just gonna give it a low score." Maybe, maybe it's this, these kind of people. <laughs> I think I'm being a bit too facetious, but um, hey, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Roleplay Podcast. Of course, except if maybe. You wanted to add anything? First, uh, first, nope. first. before we end, I'm just going to take a quick last look, see if we have any comments. Again, if you want to comment on anything we say, maybe tell us that we're awesome or we're fucking idiots, please feel free to do so. Yeah, and again, uh, as we said in the past, like if you don't want to hear about Gamers Gate anymore, if you want to hear more stuff, um, I mean, you know, very much like we had somebody uh, earlier on our well, show. We have, I, think, I think we have a few we comments. We, we reserve the right to say whatever we want, but... T Titus Aurelius says, why the hell do you not have a chat? It's a very good question, Titus, and it's simply because I don't understand how the fuck it works. Uh, <laughs> and and I, I, thought, I thought I did, but I guess I don't. And sometimes maybe I just... I think there's a button you have to press, and I, I might have just forgotten this time. I think we had one last week. Uh, we it, it really sucks. I, I wish I had a chat, because it's, it's much better. Um, and honestly. I will probably go back to Twitch soon. I've yeah. Been using it now because my internet and of course you can also tweet best. at us uh, so and a mighty sky wizard commented wow that sonic comment yeah uh, yep. and he said another post that's very long uh, he says that you know I speak of this user called thunderfoot said he says thunderfoot did a vid on shirt guy uh, then he says another thing <laughs> he says uh, I'm not just, I don't want to talk about this necessarily, but he says that there was nothing wrong with the shirt, fuck what he was wearing, he achieved something, none of those SGW fucking, okay, well, it just goes into, like, randomly pretty insulting angry. people, which, yeah, pretty angry, which I think we already did, and it's not necessarily because, you know, we hate you, Mighty Sky Wizard, it's just, like, it would be redundant, um, yeah, so there's that, so that's all the comments we have so far, so thank you again very much for all these comments, and I believe that might be sort of the end ish so yeah again thank you very much if you like the show talk about it with your friends your enemies your mom and yeah. uh, <laughs> we'll see we'll see you next week